Library. Uh, we're being recorded today. Uh, we will start off with Vice Chair. First thing on the agenda is um, uh, reorganate, reorganization of the board. Uh, we do this once a year, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. um, so for that case, do we have a nomination for chairman of the board? I would actually propose that we table this until next month when we have our new member present. Are we allowed to do that? We've, we've kind of uh, have waited. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, we did it last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did too. That's actually. Because uh, so yeah, I the think the timing of it is, is kind of odd when. I vote, I agree with you. And this is what I have, this is what I have brought up. This is what I brought up uh, the last meeting too. That, right. That we really should uh, wait yeah. till. I agree with you, gentlemen, but it's the law. It's your bylaw. I, and I, until you change the bylaw, you have to follow the bylaw. And the bylaw applies to this board and says that you have to reorganize after the, f um, the election or the first meeting after the election. And I agree with you too. But, but wouldn't um, it be the first meeting after the new individuals are seated on the board? What would be it, the purpose of what you're saying? Actually, I mean, maybe we should read the Bible. Oh, the, uh, the town election? Says, yes, yes, the town okay. election. It's actually the... What we should probably do in the, in the future is to change that. Yeah, but it's a bylaw, and you're asking the people here today to follow the bylaws. Right, but the, the bottom line, too, is that we had three people real, uh, elected this year. Um, and um, I, I do agree with you, and I do agree with that we should do it, too. Uh, uh, that, that maybe we should hold off, because we do have a new member coming. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel that that's important, too. So. So you're advocating a variance on the bylaw, by are you? Yeah. I know, exactly. I agree. <laughs> I Sticking our finger in the eye I of would the really law. just rather get it over with, but then there's that little part of me that says, you know, it would be um, more responsible, the right thing to do if we waited, because the new member uh, may vote a different way. So, so Andy Burbine's a new member, but um, he's not coming on until July. I mean, can't you have the reorganization again in July it takes five seconds it's how many times you gonna reorganize the, the board though I mean that's just my point is that it's it's every board has to follow this every board has to follow this and you can't be choosing what bylaws you decide to follow and what you don't did you find it and yes it's 17-3 there's just seems One to be no the do it now and yeah. do it again when the uh, full members board is sitting here that sounds okay, good. Because I, I really kind of would, would like to get this all with instead of delaying. So um, I think we will just uh, continue. Um, was that a motion? I made a motion to continue until the next. Do you want to withdraw it, or do you want to? I'll withdraw the motion. Okay. Second. All right. So second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. Get it over with. Uh, as you said, it is the bylaw. I personally would, would have rather waited for the, ne the new member to come in, but um, I think we've kind of so we've kind of uh, waited too long. I make a motion to uh, nominate Mr. Negrelli as, uh, as chairman. I'll second. All favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Nomination for vice chair. Nominate Mr. Mullen for vice chair. I second. 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 Yep. Favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, now it's done. It's five painful minutes. I know, but it, it's still, I feel bad about the new member not being able to do it, but then again, we'll go by the bylaw. Okay. All right. You happy now, Mr. Bergen? I am content. Yes. Okay. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. All right. Uh, next on the docket is approval of minutes from. Um, um, April 12th, 2018. I make a motion we accept the minutes of the uh, April 12th uh, meeting. I'll second that. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 Present. Okay. Um, before we start tonight, um, don't we have meeting? Do we have minutes May. from May or I don't? Did I oh, not get those? No, those were. I just put them on the desk. So. Okay. Oh, we do have May. True, right? Yeah, but you can, <coughs> we you didn't know, have time to read them. So right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Before we start, I just want to uh, 
uh, do something here. Uh, John's leaving us after what, six years, John? Yes. Yes. Uh, we just want to give you a little something. Uh, oh, God. And did you want to read it? To John Shepard, June 14, 2018, Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals and the Abington Building Commission want to express their appreciation for the years of service you've provided to the town. Recognize the commitment you have made to the town through the many meetings you have attended, the time put into researching the town zoning bylaws as well as mass general laws that pertain to each petition that has come before the board. We also appreciate your willingness to serve on the signed bylaw review committee. Your countless hours assisting in the building department have definitely made an impact and have been much appreciated. Your efforts were instrumental in getting the fee schedule updated, which was no small task. The Abington Zoning Board of Appeals and the Abington Building Commissioner recognize John Shepard for his dedication to the town of Abington, <coughs> always striving to do what is in the best interest of the town. We'll miss you at our meetings, John. Sign the Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, John. Nice. All right. Okay. All right. It being after 7 o'clock, um, having the Zoning Board of Appeals will hear the continued petition of Glenn R. LaPointe Family Trust and Diane C. LaPointe Family Trust, 245 Central Street. Oh, the it's extension. Not, oh, are uh, you changing the. Oh, actually. Okay. I'm halfway no, through. No, sorry. Sorry. Um, and I'll recuse myself again. Okay. Sorry about that. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Yeah. Give okay. us one second, please. Um, this just in hot off the press. Uh, we have a request for a six month extension from 500 Chestnut Street from uh, Peter Fiore. Um, Mr. Riley. Chairman. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Sean Riley, 5 on Washington Street. I think you know Peter Fiore. He's been in front of your board in the past. Um, I, we submitted a letter to explain why we're here under Section 10 of the zoning bylaw. If you remember, this is regarding 500 Chestnut Street. Mr. Fiore uh, has received permits from this board. The frontage variance was the first one. Uh, and we also received permits for to build a, um, a planned commercial development. We received site plan review. We we're kind of moving along well on our way. Um, however, the first variance, that first one that you granted for the frontage variance, was done in December 2016. Then there was an appeal at the time, which kind of told everything that, by statute. And when the appeal is dismissed, then the one year starts to pass. And frankly, we thought we were already going to own and be building the property, but uh, due to a number of factors, we think it's going to happen more at the end of the summer. However, since the one year um, statute applies to variances, we need to request that the that that December variance, which would expire in June, be extended with the board's vote uh, for up to an additional six months. We think we'll be closing probably within the next three or four. But to be safe and not have to come back, we'd ask for a vote of a six-month extension. And how many extensions can you have? This is one. One. Okay. Um, I believe our town lawyer looked it over, right? Yeah, um, any questions with regards to uh, which was provided to us the, uh, the dismissal and uh, the apparent and appears to be necessary um, and council advised um, that not it, it, the law is ambiguous with regards to this as suggested in the letter by uh, attorney Riley and uh, you could proceed upon this and grant the, um, the extension um, at his own risk. There is a potential if somebody wanted to <coughs> litigate uh, with regards to uh, the non-notification of uh, about us in, uh, in, the, um, in the newspaper. But uh, it's not, it's very ambiguous in the law. Um, so uh, I, would, uh, I would proceed as if uh, it had been notified and the risk is upon uh, the applicant. And uh, did you want a copy of, did you I need, oh, or you have a copy of it the? It was just provided. Okay, great, excellent. All right. All right. Um, would you have time at this point to notify? Or no. No. Okay. It's, it's not required by statute, he's right. And, and we've, it's never been required in any hearing that I've ever met at. So I, I'm confident we're 
you're all doing the right thing. Okay. It, and, and basically, this is one time. Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. Um, uh, anything? We're happy to make a motion on that. Oh, I mean, do we have to we open it to the floor? Is it? It's not really. It's a not here. No, it's yeah, it's not yeah, a yeah that's what it so said. It's not a hearing. Vote. Yep, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, on the request of Attorney Riley for Mr. <coughs> Peter Fiore, 500 Chestnut Street, um, request for a six-month extension. Uh, make a motion to approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yep. Thank you. There's actually some discussion on Beacon Hill to extend the, the time here for variance because of this problem. So that you may see that happen next year or so. Okay, thanks. Thank <coughs> With my apologies to Mr. LaPointe, um, the Abington Zoning Bo uh, Board of Appeals will hear the petition of Glen R. LaPointe Family Trust and Diane C. LaPointe Family Trust, 245 Central Street, Abington. A special permit under 17521A to allow multi use. Fam multi family use and variance under 17514 will allow more than one principal building at zero Brockton Ave, property located on Assessor's Map 3, lots 4752 in the highway commercial zone. <coughs> zero Brockton Ave, uh, let's see. Is subject to system development fees. Thank you. And must be paid uh, prior to building. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Okay. Who's still the point? Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is John Carter. I work for the Russell Wheatley Company. I'm here with uh, Glenn LaPointe Sr. and Glenn LaPointe Jr. Uh, regarding a uh, project that we've uh, gotten a continued hearing on on Brockton Avenue uh, in Abington. Uh, as you know, at our, at our last hearing, uh, we are here to discuss uh, obtaining a special permit for uh, multi-residential and a highway commercial zone uh, and a variance uh, for one, more than one principal building on a lot. Uh, we discussed this, we discussed it uh, in, de in, in detail last at the last meeting about the, the paper streets being a uh, being a hardship for us uh, uh, the angle of the lot to the street line makes it difficult to uh, situate the buildings in a in, in a manner that is different than what we than, than what we have there is a wetlands issue uh, and uh, and also the fact that although we're in a Highway commercial zone. I don't know if I passed these all out before. Um, we are in a highway commercial zone, but as you can see, our lot, our lot is highlighted in blue. The lots that are highlighted in red are actually uh, commercial properties, and the, uh, the remainder, all highlighted in yellow, are all uh, residential, single-family, multi-family condominiums, um, all residential. Uh, that being said, through, through the discussion and the public uh, and, and, and with the public input that we had, uh, the public was all very much in favor of um, of um, of the residential use. Um, uh, we had Mr. I think Mr. Batson was here. Uh, he came up with some uh, some pictures and uh, he explained his his situation. Uh, we always know that uh, that the commercial and Residential is always a flashpoint because you know, people sit in their backyards and they have a commercial property right beside them. They generally, some of the commercial properties aren't kept, kept as nicely as others. Uh, so I know he had shown some pictures. He had some pretty, uh, um, he didn't have a very good view from his backyard. Um, the boards were not 
in favor of uh, the boards in general, the boards in the, in the town are not in favor of um, buildings running perpendicular to the street line. So we got to see the side of the building. Uh, so hence, this is why we came up with this concept of of putting a building fairly straight to the fairly straight to the to the to the roadway, and then and then adding adding two other buildings to the rear uh, so that we could gain our, um, you know, so we could gain our, um, uh, our nine, uh, our, well, at that time it was 11 units when we first moved, when I first did this, but um, the chair had, had um, uh, Mr. Negrelli had, had offered, uh, he had a hard, he had a hard time with looking at it, the density of the, of the, of the property with the 11 units, so we went back, we looked at the, we looked at the site, um, <coughs> And uh, and we came back. We cut it back by by two units or 20 percent. Uh, we knocked 20. We knocked 20 percent of the buildings out. We knocked out um, about eight, about 14 percent of the impervious area on the site. Um, uh, so it is. We, we we have tried. We have tried to make it as as as, um, as pleasing as possible for you. Uh, we also added the. Um, in the in the center of the parking lot, we added a, a turnaround for um, ambulances or um, or trash trucks or whatever, so that when they when they do leave, they can they can leave facing out into out, out into Brockton <coughs> Avenue. Um, there again, as I said, the uh, the impervious areas. Not now that we we've, we've reduced it, we we reduced it from although they the. The 11 unit building actually did conform to the, to the, to the percentage of coverage um, at, uh, at, you know, at, the, uh, at the worst was 54%. I, I think you remember we did bring in two different, two different versions, the, the, the one big building with 11 units and then the, the other one had a three unit in the front with two, four units in the back and, that, and they were both uh, in the area of between 50 and 54% of, uh, of, um, of lot coverage. Uh, with this that you're looking at here, we're down to a uh, to a 40 percent, uh, 40 percent um, a, a lot coverage with the building and the parking and the sidewalks. Um, so I think what we've done is is um, we've looked at it, we've looked at it with 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 you in mind. I think that the the variance that we're asking for as far as um, as far as residential, I think is I, I think we we've, we've shown that we do have. We have we do have a hardship. You can almost flip it in the other direction, thinking of if if you didn't get if you didn't allow this and you had to put commercial in, it's going to be a hardship for all the neighbors the neighbors in the area because they're all in residential houses and you're going to plunk a, a commercial a commercial um, a commercial project in the middle of. Uh, I think. My, myself personally, if it had been looked at, they probably would have, because of the majority of the, uh, the lots in, in this particular area, they, they probably may have thought of stopping the highway commercial at Mill Street and, and creating an R20 or an R30 zone down to the Brockton, High, Brockton <coughs> Town Line. That's just my feeling. They didn't. We we're in a highway commercial zone, so we are asking for the special permit for the highway commercial. Uh, for the residential and the highway commercial zone, and we are also asking for the the variance for the buildings for the residential for the residential buildings. I mean, I think it's I think when you look at it, when you look at the the uh, the, the renderings that were done, I mean, I think it's going to be very uh, I think it's going to be a very attractive uh, very attractive lot when all said and done. You know, Mr. Lapointe and uh, and, and and his son. They do first class work. I mean, it, 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 uh, I'm sure. I'm very confident that it'll uh, it'll look really nice. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> when I, when we have to look at this in a certain way, so I'm going to look at it as the projects that it, have been proposed, projects that you've done, mm -hmm. and um, uh, when I look at this area, and I did look at the area. I'm not going to walk to the woods, of course, but. Uh, you're you're right about the residential. There's a lot of residents. The people that that have um, written and approved this idea, if you will, um, all all residents. There's no commercial. There's no nothing. Although unlike other projects where we had people from different uh, businesses saying 
Yeah, great project. This project right here is set in an area that is residential. It is when it comes down to it. And you have a lot of residents that um, uh, like the idea. Personally, I didn't like the first one. It was uh, really congested in my mind, especially when I look at the project that you just, uh, and you're in the process of doing now where you have three units mm -hmm. put into that area there. Mm -hmm. This is a bigger area. Mm -hmm. So I, I like what you've done here with the, with the nine units. Right. It, it's given more space. It, it's, um, we took that into it, consideration. It, and, it's, and it's more safety wise. It's not everything jammed in there. Um, and I do like the residents. And, and again, I say they're residents, they're not business owners that, um, that like this idea. Mm -hmm. And looking at the property, I can see where you can see where it would be residential based. But then we're still into that variance part. So um, I'm gonna let the other guys have a conversation mm -hmm. here. Do you, wanna, do you wanna say something, Bill? Sure. Um, I appreciate the um the elevation drawings because that always helps us yeah I, th I thought that was pretty you know visualize yeah. um, it says a lot and you know basically you get three prongs of, of um, <coughs> to touch on for the variance and the variance is specifically about um, uh, multiple buildings I believe right it's yeah. not correct, correct. Um, and you know in looking at these renderings, you know, the, the overhead, right? Um, and you know, you have what basically you're you're just a hair under an acre, right? So right. It's forty two thousand square feet, so you're just under an acre. Um, you know, and to have, in my mind, to have something like that facing Brockton Street, Brockton Ave, Brock, whatever, Brockton. Um, you know, I just think. I, I, I kind of like the project where I think it makes like a little a little neighborhood and you know so when I look at the hurdles you have, have to overcome um, you know it's size shape and tough topography well you have an acre but it's it's long and narrow and it's skewed at you know whatever 38 degrees 40 degrees um, to in my mind to not request a variance at all and just go after a special permit then you're looking at one continuous building that's correct and I think in that case then you're you're, you're breaking up the the townhousey neighborhoody right. look of it um, and then you know the third one is 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 what you're offering didn't we tell you to silence you did. I thought it was just I saying. thought I had to I thought it ran out of juice <laughs> I'm teasing <laughs> Um, like school. <laughs> um, the third one is, um, you know, I feel, you know, especially now that it's scaled down, that what you offer is a better solution than a continuous building that would look more like just, you know, an apartment building. Um, in my mind, I think you've satisfied the three hurdles for a variance um, but I'm only one vote mm -hmm. so that's what and those are what we're say. which is again shaped topography it's it's a long narrow lot okay yeah. so it's not all frontage it's it's a little bit of frontage and then it goes back um, what almost 400 feet yeah. 380 feet um, so I think that and since what he's asking for is to be able to break the building up the buildings into multiple buildings um, I, I would rather see something like this when I drive by than a single building uh, did, did that did that pass in um, the town meeting I'm sorry anyone know Excuse me? if that bylaw passed did that bylaw pass that you have to have uh, the buildings facing towards the road yeah, we don't we don't have copies of that, do we? Yeah, I have everything, and it's put in the book. Where what what, what bylaw was it? It was frontage. I think it was something on the frontage that the buildings couldn't be. Right. be I'll check it. But I would, you know, I think as people drive by, there is a building that was recently uh, permitted to basically go lengthwise, and you know, until the landscaping grows in and everything, it's not. It looks 
attractive in one direction but not so attractive in another direction and yeah, I don't know I, I just I'd rather see that I guess going down the road than, than one street than, than, than the end or just a long block of a building so so the bottom line is you're trying to make it look better than than um, like Bill saying yeah, that's you know, exactly long right. straight right. building. Right. Okay. That's the reason for asking for the variance. Right. Aesthetically to try to make it look better in the neighborhood. Instead of putting them all together. Exactly. Right. Instead of this big row building. Mm -hmm. No, I mean I'm good. I think that based upon the shape I mean I think this rendering helped because based on upon the shape of a lot you can clearly see that this would not work as one continuous building. Um, so I think, and I think the reducing it from 11 to 9 has alleviated a lot of our concerns with respect to the special permit and overdevelopment of the lot. So, I don't really have much to add. Yep, I have no questions. Nothing? No, no so far. Um, Marshall, you have anything to add? Or? No, just here to answer questions. Okay. Um, the floor. Let's open it to the floor then. Anybody? Sir? Okay, I was here at the last meeting. Yep. And, uh, and Sean is here, and I'm. Can you I'm state your name and address, this. please, oh, for the record? Thank you. Across the street from the project. And uh, I think this is just a very attractive. Like John's Court, we've never had a problem there. Very attractive. Very attractive. I think this is a good city. Um, and don't let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody else? Okay, we'll close it to the floor. Um, again, I, I have an issue giving out a variance for it, but but um, the more we talk about it, the the design that you have, it's 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 a much better design, and um, it's that variance part that's sticking in my head. But um, jo uh, Bill brought up a couple of interesting things. And, would you? Um, what do you think? Pass it down. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I think, like I said, you know, the, the, the three check boxes we need to grant a variance, I think, be satisfied in my mind, which is obviously shape of the of the lot. Um, they created a hardship, and then I would rather see. Um, uh, a neighborhood design such as that than just one giant building there and, and, and so that would be the is what he's offering um, I think it's um, the, so not to grant the variance would would be more detrimental because then his option would be just to put in a single building I just don't think that would have the visual appeal See, I think we we have an issue too with this being highway commercial because, again, I have to I have to mention that you know we have turned down mm -hmm. condos and a, a highway commercial, and that may be coming back. So uh, we need to be careful with this. But again, I want to stress the point that this was never really a commercial place. This was not a commercial. Uh, it is highway commercial. Yes, we see that. Right. But zone highway. When commercial. we look at it, and you have the people come in. These are all residents that are coming in. These are not business owners. Uh, also, you have you have an area that is it really is more residential than highway commercial, which is commercial. The whole area, when you look at it, when you drive around, there are some businesses across the street in different areas. But as we push this way, it's it's more. It's yeah. more uh, residential. Yeah, if you go from Mill Street, if you go from Mill Street to the to the to the town and city line, it's all it's all residential. Because now we, we could be shows. we could be uh, if we accept this, we could be stepping in some mud here because we have turned something down uh, in a highway commercial. So we have to keep that in mind too. True. If you're concerned about that, it's possible to investigate. Although it's to avoid the variance but comply with the law, connect them, and I don't know what would comply and constitute connecting, 
and I'm sure this case law with regards to it through a footing or a knee wall, concrete knee wall, underground you're not going to see it. In or to take it even a step further, it might be a canopy connecting between walkways and buildings or something like that. I don't know what would qualify. Because I think I think we have an issue that um, but if, if that could come back to bite us on this one. Well, Mr. Chairman, yes. actually, in the highway, in the definition of the highway commercial, it talks specifically about um, permits and a variance for. Um, uh, building residential. It's within the actual paragraph of the bylaw. So uh, the actual bylaw does foresee that you would actually do residential. And you mentioned the three um, uh, you know, factors that we have to hit for a variance. But there is a fourth one, and it's that the relief is without substantial detriment to the public good or nullifying the intent of this bylaw. So um, there is no detriment to the public good. We've already worked out that the, yeah. um, the circumstances are to a topography, right, from the variance. There's no substantial detriment to the public good in this case yeah. um, on uh, Brockton Avenue. That's true. Yeah. And then it doesn't nullify the intent of bylaw because that particular bylaw, which talks about highway commercial, does actually have a phrase that talks about residential, and that, that's why we're here today because you're actually using that to um, ask us, can we put in? So you're not nullifying that bylaw. That's very different to the last issue, and you're talking about a project that was on Route 18. Right. Yeah. Well, I just want to cover our, our ends because we want to be smart about this because we don't want this to come back to bite us. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way you can connect these underneath, or is that a possibility? I, I can. I can connect them. It's not. It's not. A I know. I, we we want the we want the style you have here. It's perfect. That's fine. But is is there any way that we could get away from a variance? That's what we're asking. I, I could. You'd I, have to. Uh, I connect the app. You have to find out what qualifies. I'm sure this case law. And this isn't the first time this has happened. Mm -hmm. That it uh, is more appropriate to do what's proposed here, but without. Uh, and, and Dennis is correct in speaking with regards to the residential, but that's not the that's the special permit. The variance is multiple buildings on the lot, which is what the chair, I believe, is concerned with. Yes. Um, and yeah, you could agree to continue the meeting and uh, check in check with council case law with what qualifies as connecting that you won't be seen, whether it's a footing or whatever it is, and then. Uh, come back and see if you can Cause make this work without uh, granting something that you don't want to grant. Especially um, after we have turned down a highway commercial. Multiple, we, we multiple want, we want buildings to, on a lot. We want to cover ourselves on this. And I uh, must say that this is, this is a really great project right here. The variant spot is what's kind of kicking us a little bit. Mm -hmm. we, we're not saying we don't like the project. On this one. Well, if if I withdraw this again and then and then come back in, I mean. No, I'll just continue. Continue. Continue, but I'm I'm losing. I've already lost a month. I lost two months now. Um, this is the third month that I'd, I'd be losing. Um, I can connect the buildings underground um, with with a footing. I can build it. I, I can I can go the long ways and just continue the whole the whole thing. And then there's no variance. I know. Right. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think we're doing the right thing here. You did do the right thing. It's great. It, it, it's excellent. See, I think... Uh, I have to ask, too. I mean, who are you talking no, about? Who, is, who here um, are we talking about that carries a risk? Is it a risk of the petitioner? I, I don't think it is. Nobody's going to challenge um, the petitioner on, on his project. Is it? Are you worried that somebody else is going to come to the zoning board and say, look what you did, and you didn't do it on our house, and so we challenge that? Well, there's always that. I mean, you know what? They can do that. That's what you know. That's what laws are for. That's what courts are for. But, but yeah. I just want to let it know so, that this is this is a different scenario situation where it is mostly residential we're not fooling around here this is this is not really when you look at this from the top from the side from it, it's more residential than highway it's un unfair to us petitioner to carry the cost and time just because you're that's concerned a good point. that somebody's going to be appealing this you know this is a zoning zoning board of appeals it's a regulatory board you make the decision uh, that's a good point you don't make the decision mm -hmm. You live with it. But and the bottom line on this is that it, uh, we want to make sure that everybody knows and you know and 
the other people know that this is to us this is a different project Absolutely. we would yeah. rather not give out the variance yeah. um, but, but, but but again like you just said mm -hmm. um, like Dennis just said it's it, it is time consuming for you so um, what do you think Bill I I'm I think that this particular project is substantially different not only in its location but in its proposal from the one you're referencing well I just want and, to make that, that clear that's yep. exactly the point of the Zoning Board of Appeal is yep. where that's why we sit here to make that judgment where you know if there's a highway commercial three miles away that's totally different than a highway commercial here and, and it was our opinion that that previous one is best suited for commercial property but I, I feel it's our opinion that this particular property is best suited for residential use. So I'm happy to make a, uh, a motion on this. Um, does she want to add anything else, sir? No, I mean, just as I said, every application stands up on its own. I mean, there was other concerns about that project, including the density that they yep. were trying to do it. Yep. Route 18 is a, a different creature than, you know, what they're proposing. So. I mean, I can see a lot of and differences and between and the and two. And again, we, we really don't like to give out variances. Um, that is one thing that we try to stay away from. Um, but again, Bill brings up some good points about the shape of the of the um, of the property, and it wouldn't look nice if it was all together. Right. It, it really, and I understand the building inspector's opinion, and I, I appreciate that too. But again, like you just said, you've already come for us twice so uh, maybe we've been hit, hitting this around enough so we should make I a think, decision I think also we should recognize that the petitioner has drastically cut back because you came with 11 um, yes. uh, places and now you've come with nine yes you know you heard what you talked about about the lot and a lot of buildings and has come back I mean that's got to be to a cost mm -hmm. right but, but you did that that's to um, work with the board so okay you know. So I'd like to make a motion on the petition of Glen R. LaPointe Family Trust and Diane C. LaPointe Family Trust, 245 Central Street, Abington, for a special permit under 17521A to allow multifamily use and a variance under 17514 to allow more than one principal building at 0 Brockton Ave, property located on Assessor's Map 3, lots 47 through 52 in the Highway Commercial Zone be approved. As per plan submitted. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. That was not an easy one. But great job. Looks really good. I'll talk with the building inspector in that. And if um, if we can find a way to connect it with the foundation, then I'll do it. Then that'll be great. I'll do it. That'll be excellent. Thank All you part. very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Help. Okay. All righty. Um, being after 705, Abington Zoning Board of Appeals, Appeals will hear the petition of Mary Bridget Bell and Mary B. Bell, 535 Groveland Street, Abington, for a special permit under 17532 I to legalize in law apartment at 535 Groveland Street. Okay, and this has no bearing on the storage system. Anything else? <coughs> Hello, ladies. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? I'm Mary Bell. This is my daughter, Mary Bridget Bell. We recently purchased property on at 535 Groveland Street with an in law apartment. I just want to legalize that into our name. I was uh, contacted by one of the members who told me that had, we didn't need to do this because it was already grandfathered, but we'd like to make sure yeah. it's put in our name. Okay. Um, I think he was correct. I think. Yeah, we researched it with Marshall, uh, as, building inspector. <coughs> as I was going through the application to prepare for the meeting, I uh, looked at the uh, street file, and this uh, an in-law was created prior to the requirements of in-law apartments in our zoning bylaw. This was, uh, which was uh, February seventh of '05, I think, off the top of my head, and this was created in uh, 1999 clearly and it's uh, ev even on the certificate of occupancy uh, so this is a grandfathered in-law that 
follows the property, does not expire upon sale of the property, and does not need an annual reporting. They bought that when they bought that uh, three to five, three to five Groveland Street. Um, you could open the meeting um, and find that uh, there is no decision necessary and close the meeting and they own it. Just they can ask for trash barrels and I'll approve it. <laughs> but just to clarify it though, that when you said forever, if they change the use of the building and they knock it down and start over, that's Oh, if they abandon so the so use, so, so yeah. you can do that. But, uh, so it wouldn't come back on that way. You own it. You bought it. It okay. came with it. And every year you have to fill out a form. No, they do not. No. They do not. Oh, they don't because they that's do right. I'm sorry. But yeah. it is it is an in-law apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Who would be living in it? I live in it with my husband. Oh, excellent. Okay. She's got the better end of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, by the uh, bill inspector, what, what would we like to do here now? Just grandfather. Can just so uh, this, this make a motion to close the meeting. It and uh, there's no decision necessary. It's grandfathered and close the hearing. Okay. Anybody want to do that? Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. We got to vote on yeah, it. Yeah, we got to vote on it. Yeah, go ahead. We got to make it a little formal here. Okay. Um, <laughs> do I have nothing to add? You want to open it to the floor? Thank you. Um, no. No. I don't think so. We have to open it to the floor. What is a public hearing? Technically? No. No. no? There's no need to have any. Right. It, it, it exists. Um, it exists. It's grandfathered in. Maybe she should withdraw. Story. So we just have to. She could withdraw. That would be the. Oh, best. you can withdraw. So that's yeah, perfectly yes, fine. Yes, I withdraw it. Okay. Accepted. We'll make a motion to accept the withdrawal of the um, applicant special permit. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Alrighty, uh, Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hear the petition of Shakyamuni LLC, 150 Farm Street, Dover, for special permit under 17538E to allow nine foot wide parking spaces at 10 Rail Railroad Street. Property located on Assessor's Map 53, Lot 117 in the CBD. Hi, good evening. Sean Riley, 500 Washington, Washington Street, representing the applicant and the owner of 10 Railroad Street, the former New England Art Building, and historically the former Crossett Shoe Factory in Abington. We are here tonight for the sole purpose of a, ver a special permit, actually, to allow the construction of a parking lot with nine foot wide parking spaces. Um, typically, it would be a 10 foot wide parking space, but because this is a preservation of a historical building, under this, in the central business district, um, a special permit is all that is required in order to allow the nine foot wide spaces. And just so I can make sure we're all on the same page, this is a copy of that part of the bylaw. Um, I highlighted this for the record and also to show that historically, there's a picture of the building. Wow, it's much bigger, huh? No, same, same, well, relatively the same size. I think there might be part of one wing that came down. I'm kind of sure. I am. You are now. Cool. <laughs> um, so because this is a historical building, uh, the board, uh, we would seek a special permit. The owner is renovating this historical factory building into residential units on the top three floors and a mix of residential and common areas on the first floor. The first floor would include up to eight units. The property management office, things like a library and reading area, exercise, yoga room, a common social room, and art gallery area. The existing paved parking lot contains angled spaces, most of which are only about eight to eight and a half feet wide. That's the existing parking on site now. There are no parking lot islands in the present layout. The new owner will install new parking lot islands with trees and shrubs. The parking spaces will be repainted with nine foot wide perpendicular spaces and 25 foot wide aisles. And I've submitted a copy of the layout plan to you. That layout plan, the site plan, has already been approved by the planning board for the town. The central business zoning bylaw encourages the reuse and renovation of historical and architecturally significant buildings and further allows for modified typical design requirements by special permit from the zoning board. Approval of the special permit will allow the owner to construct 142 off-street and tree-lined parking spaces in a much safer layout. 
than the prior or an existing parking lot layout with wider spaces than what are existing on site right now. Um, I think you might re you received um, correspondence from the police and fire chief. All right. Yep. If you'd like. Uh, you want to read? Oh, you want to read it? Sure. I mean, it doesn't matter either one of us, but okay. The, uh, right. From John, not all the fire chief. The fire department has been working with the owners architects for the 10 railroad street project and while we've not yet seen the updated overall site plan for the entrance and egress lanes at this point we have no opposition to the proposed nine foot width of the individual parking spaces as they will allow for larger turning radius and emergency vehicles i have a copy to, i have copied attorney riley on this to keep him updated uh, since that he does have the final site plan which you guys also have um, the fire chief we've been working on this project since november of last year um, i've met out him out on the uh, site on more than one occasion, everything has been put on the site plan the way he wanted it. He, he had us change some of the uh, driveway entrance widths and all, and he had uh, asked for the wider aisle widths, which don't exist now, so that, that's all been implemented uh, at his request. Also, the uh, police chief sent an email, I have no objection to allowing the parking spaces at the building previously known as New England Art to be nine feet wide instead of a typical 10 foot wide requirement. It's my understanding this will allow more space for entrance and egress lanes and will be beneficial to the fire department vehicles. Please excuse this email because I'm using voice recognition software. Um, uh, sincerely, Chief Majenski of the Avenue Police Department. Um, the police and fire again have approved, have been a part of this planning project, um, have no objection to the nine foot wide. Um, it allows us to have to kind of maximize as much off-street parking as possible there which we like to see in the central business district and again uh, it being a special permit there is no need for hardship here it is basically um, a benefit to the area to do this also I should point out the town's engineering consultant reviewed this and issued his approval and recommendation to approve the site plan which again was approved by the planning board and finally the town's traffic engineer consultant reviewed the entire layout, the number of parking spaces, and they recommended approval, which the planning board did approve. Um, and just to give you a, a, a sight at what this used to be, this is the existing parking lot when the factory was in operation. That will be going away. Um, um, How many vehicles are in there, do you know? Well, there's 195 spaces. How many, how many apartments? Oh, I'm sorry, that's, that's what it used to be, 195 spaces, right. uh, with the eight, eight and three inches, eight and five inches. This would be, we're only, there'd be 142 off-street spaces for the 110 total, so it's 1.3, which matches the building across right. the street. Um, I know the bylaw says one space per unit, but right. planning board always requires more than that. Um, so the 1.3 is usually, we try to hit a minimum threshold. Um, and the nine spaces allows us to do that. Do you have a drawing of what it's going to look like afterwards? or You have the site plan. You should have that oh, as yeah, part of the right. submission. Right. Um, oh, there it is. Yep. So my question. Were you done? Well, go right ahead. I apologize. Just, we're just. Go right so ahead. in reference, um, Mr. Riley, you're talking specifically about um, this section, this parking lot area here? No, it's most of the spaces are <coughs> going to be nine. I, there may be just a handful that are ten. Uh, there's some parallel spaces. Well, I, I guess I'd ask because under, you know, the bylaw, uh, which Section E references the historic, um, E1 says that uh, this is allowed provided there's no decrease in the number of parking spaces. and. In some ways, you have to decrease if you're running at eight foot now, and then you're going up to nine foot. Obviously, you know, right, every we're ten actually, spaces, you're losing a space. Right. We're actually spaces, we're going the other space. way, right? We're actually getting larger spaces than what exists now. Right. Well, Correct. So there are eight. But I was just now? you had. I have something to show you that if you want. You know, you had like on the old locus, you had a. So you, I counted 175. You said 190, and went down to 142. Uh, so the angle yeah I mean, currently they have they use angle spaces and they don't have the wider aisles that we require under zoning bylaws so we have redesigned that to have the 25 foot wide aisles which don't exist now um, so it's just safer and we're planting trees in the parking lot where they don't exist now um, and again the town's engineer the traffic engineer have reviewed it and the planning board as part of site plan review has approved it. Now, 
nine foot wide parking space is not uncommon. The, this town hall and library has nine foot wide parking spaces. You're parked in them now. The new school building has nine foot wide parking spaces. And I can attest because my daughter's taking it, her license test on Monday, the test for the kids driving now is to pull into a nine foot wide parking space. That, uh, Marshall, line. is that true? Hmm? That, that there are different um, sizes? Of, yes. Uh, and, uh, it's not anything. This is a good idea. The, uh, for every, uh, every nine spaces, you're going to get an extra space. Right. And the more spaces is better, and the nine foot is appropriate. Nine by 18, nine by 22 for uh, right. parallel, uh, which I don't know you have very many here. Uh, this is a good idea. Yeah. I looked at it, I looked at the aisles, I looked at it, and that's what's required. I, uh, it's a good idea. Thank you. Bill, anything? No, that was my only concern. Um, I was just curious, what qualifies as a historic building? I didn't see that defined anywhere. Is that the um, commission? Makes well, that actually, or? yeah, there actually is a historic um, commission preservation um, set. Every town has one, um, and I happen to be in it, um, in the one for Abington. Um, and they, we have a list of buildings. Now, there's actually only one building and one historic district. The historic building is the Abington Depot. So when you're having a beer in the Abington Depot, you can be content in knowing you're having historic beer. Um, and the Abington, um, uh, what's it, the Island Grove is actually the historic district because there was a great meeting there, an abolitionist meeting. But we do actually have a list of houses and sites right. that um, were done really um, in, I think, the 1970s. Dr. Whiting and the team that then went around, uh, and that's what the History Commissions do. They go around and they take photographs and, and uh, record these buildings and try and keep these buildings as they are. I mean, they don't have, uh, you know, they try and change some of the buildings, like the Abington Depot into historic buildings of the state. Right, know, that's on the National Register of Historic Places. That's a national mm -hmm. registered building. So, um, so I do get um, on the History Commission. I do get requests asking, particularly for a CPA when they're looking for money. Right. Is that is that a historic building? And when those buildings get demolished, um, they actually do contact the History Department, uh, the History. Um, Commission, and we can't actually, we don't have any bylaws or anything to stop them from demolishing, but usually the owners are very kind and they let us take photographs and, uh, you know, try and preserve something before the buildings, which are usually a danger anyway, are, um, are demolished. So it's, um, what's a historic building? I think it's literally, um, it's uh, over 100 years, 100 years old in Abington. It's the late 1800s. Okay. It's, um, that's right. Um, there is an actual list, a book. Um, there is a copy that anybody can see in the library, in the Abington Public Library. Um, you can go and um, have a look at it and see if your address is on that. The Crossed Shoe Factory, which is the site of this building, Crossed Shoe Company built this building. Um, this was one of the couple of uh, shoe factories in Abington. Abington, for those who don't know, was uh, made the most shoes for the Civil War uh, at any town. Abington was a huge shoe, fac shoe town, as was Brockton and Whitman. And you probably know. Um, Whitman has converted their factory, shoe factory, into residential apartments. Rockland tr transformed the Emerson shoe factory into residential apartments, and here's where we are now. The Crossed shoe factory is being proposed here in Abington. So. And so under E, what provision are you seeking relief under where it says you four, can... Four. The last four. one. Because two is specific to parking, uh, but I'm assuming that provision doesn't apply with respect to the net floor area? Right. Those are options that can be applied by the planning board. The last one at the bottom is only could be applied by the zoning board. That dimensional requirements can be waived by special permit if you're trying to renovate and preserve a historical building in the town of Abington, which this is. Okay. Um, okay. John? So I, my biggest concern is, again, I drove it again today, done it a few times. Uh, I'm concerned about Railroad Street itself, parking there, and I know you're going to say you can't do anything about it. People are going to park there anyway. But right now, no one parks it. I've done it a couple of times, and the only ones that do is by the, the beer place. Uh, the same thing concern I have is on Birch Street. Is that is there, and I know you've got some parking that's going to be pretty tight on a few of those. I, I can give you an update on that, John. Um, there is no parking allowed on Railroad Street. In fact, one of the approvals was we're, we're installing no parking signs um, along the Railroad Street, the railroad side. You're right. No one parks there now because there is no shoulder. They do park down near the right uh, down near um, the cellar. 
Yes. Um, but the fire chief and I were out there, and so we're putting no parking signs along there so it's clear. Even though they don't do it now, we're putting signs up there so they can be towed if they ever tried it later. Um, and we've done a couple of things. Brighton Street, the neighbors asked us to have that entrance be entrance only instead of two-way as it has been for decades. We agreed to that too. So the traffic consultants did a pretty thorough job. We had a 231-page report submitted, and then the town's traffic engineer reviews it, and everything's been approved. And then my last thing would be the width on not all of them need to be nine feet, but I, I my concern is that senior citizens like myself, as you get older, when you're turning in these nine foot, it gets pretty not yet for me, but it <laughs> how does many, get how many got? Uh, I think there is the right outside of the court of the that that's that a legal that requirement is stipulated. It conforms, yeah. They will have to conform. Yeah. You one, two, three, four, based five. Based on the right. amount that is required and the amount you have, there is an, uh, a required amount, and that will have to be right. that. This is a, um, we're kind of trying to go as green as possible. There's spaces that are reserved for electric cars, the spaces that are reserved for zip cars, shared cars, to try to actually limit the amount of cars. The whole point of CBD Central Business is to have some mix of residents and business. So this is kind of, you know, bringing immediate customers to the North Abing Abingdon Business District. And the intent is they can walk to the depot, they have something, or go to Dave Nisby's, uh, shout out to Dave Nisby, to get a haircut, or be in a drug. You know, they don't have to use their cars. In fact, one of the uh, leasing strategies here is your rent will be lower if you don't need to park a car here. You know, so there's incentives for that. So uh, these apartments, is that correct? Yeah. How and many units? I'm sorry. Yeah, there's 14. There's no. 142 apartments. How many? There's a hundred and because you got employees. They're all this. Well, I get the breakdown right here for you. Now, are you are you taking away from the business area? Uh, no, apartment? no. In, in fact, no. We're not allowed to use any of the business parking. The businesses in North Haven use the street parking. That was one of the critical things. I've talked to some of the businesses there. In fact, right. Mr. Villa from Martins was at our first hearing. He's adamant supporting this, um, very very much in support of this property because it was customer base. Um, and the police and fire and all, we, we were talking about parking issues. Like I said, we've been working on this since November. Um, but to answer your earlier question, um, 97 one-bedroom units, three studio apartments for on-site employees for maintenance, two two-bedroom units reserved for the owner, and then eight two-bedroom units for tenants. So really, it ends up being 100 one-bedroom units and 10 two-bedroom units. Okay. Right. So with your approval of the special permit, it would allow this preservation project essentially to proceed. Any other questions, gentlemen? Well, it's um, 110 apartments. And how many parking lots? 142 parking lots? Spots, 140, 142 spaces for residents, but that doesn't include, we also have seven more spaces reserved just for uh, employees. Those are on the Birch Street side. Um, and we also have two more reserved in a garage for just the owner. She's going to be living there. Um, so there actually is about 154 spaces, but to be conservative, I counted only the 142 for actual residents and then divided it up. Well, let's be specific, shall we? So it was 142 yeah. plus 7, 147, 8, 9, plus 2 is 51. 151 um, places, is that right? I am getting my notes, Dennis. Let's see. Yes. Um, oh, okay, 142 spaces, seven for employees, two for the garage, and then there are three other loading zone. We label them as loading zone spaces. That's for people if they want to pull in and drop off the groceries or drop off a piece of furniture. Um, that's where the shuttle van, they're also having a shuttle van to the T station. Um, so, but we didn't count those in 142. Okay, so we've got 154 yeah. places all Total. So off street. We, we don't have any on-street parking. Is there any parking. other parking places? No. We don't have any, no, no on-street parking. Okay, so we have 110 apartments and we have 154 parking spaces. Um, and the members today have to decide in a special permit three issues. They have to decide whether it's not injurious to the public welfare, whether it doesn't overload the public systems, and whether it doesn't create undue traffic. Those are the three points that you have to decide in a special permit. Um, so I suppose my simple question to you, um, Mr. Riley, is um, where's everybody going to park in the, if they have two cars? 
They don't. They're one bedroom apartments and studio apartments, and as I mentioned earlier, they, they have controls. In fact, one of the planning board conditions was each unit would have one parking sticker. If you come here and say, hey, I got three people moving in three cars, you won't be allowed to rent there. There's management of the property. That's what a lot of the, these properties do with the factories. So it's self-controlled. If they're on the street, they get towed. It doesn't work for us. So in a, couple, well, a couple that come, um, they're only going to allow to have one car. Yeah, to, to, they'll be guaranteed one parking space. So what about visitor spots? Yeah, that's where the other 30 some odd are, are open spaces. Um, and again, to answer your question about you know overloading or anything like that, that's where the town's traffic engineer specifically reviewed all of the intersections. Well, we're, we don't have that plan in front of us. Do you have that plan? I have their I have their re their response letter. Their I'm sorry, their final draft letter. And so this is something we could not read in one meeting. You, are you going to continue the meeting if we have no, to take this? No, we appreciate. Aspect? We're only here to. So all due respect, we're only here to talk about the width of the parking spaces, really not like the, the traffic engineer's re report, but I'm happy to present it to you find a request. This is the traffic engineer's final review, and I will also, just to anticipate, I'll give you also the town's consulting engineer's final review where he recommends approval of the project and the residential use, uh, thus create, as it is known to create a customer base for the downtown business area. Um, and I'll, get, I'll reiterate, the police chief and the fire chief both support the nine foot wide spaces because of the safety benefits that creates by creating, as you alluded, more parking spaces, w wider aisles, and no street parking. Okay. This is designed for safety. Um, it's designed for safety. Okay. So um, let us talk about the actual area that you are uh, building in, right? Um, so on one side is um, Bird Street, right? And that um, intersection there, and is not one of the most um, dangerous intersections in Massachusetts. Would it be right in saying that? It would no, be right. no, not one of the most. If you live there, you'd say that. Yeah. It's not one of the most. Um, actually, it doesn't have a high. To be honest with you, it doesn't have the high crash ratio that some of other uh, um, uh, intersections in Abington do. However, I'll reiterate. The intersections are not part of this hearing tonight. This is about the parking spaces. No, no love, um, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. We deal with safety. That's what we're doing. It's a regulatory. We're not talking about, in, in size of, a par of apartments, of um, parking spaces, we're actually linking out how many cars are going to be able to park there. And if I could continue, yeah. based on the Planning Board's hearings that we've had since November, the town's professional traffic engineer reviewed that intersection, okay, and all the other surrounding intersections. Part of our agreement we offered, it's the town owns the intersection. We can't go do anything to the intersection. So what we offered to do was to pay for the road safety audit to be done at that intersection. It's called an RSA. An RSA has to be completed by the town in order to then qualify for grant money to do intersection improvements. We offered to pay for that because the town has not yet paid for one. They're actually doing one in the next couple of weeks at the intersection of, of Washington Street and Adams Street at that fork in the road. Ishar Avenue. You know are where I'm are talking? you telling me that you paid for the safety review? Is that we what are you're telling me? Upon approval of the permits, we have it in writing as part of our conditions of site plan review that we will pay for the road safety audit to be paid for. That's when they get the town, the local, the Old Colony Planning Council, and any of any state officials. They all meet at the intersection. They do traffic st uh, study data, and they come up with immediate improvements, and then they come up with long-term improvements. We've also committed to pay for whatever immediate improvements are. <coughs> So what suggested. did they actually come up with in, in, in the plans? What did they say? It hasn't been done yet. It won't be oh, done. It, it won't be done unless the project gets approved. Because there's no. Why would you do it if it doesn't? If the project doesn't approve. So no safety plan has been done on this project at all. The traffic data has been done. All they did traffic counts. They reviewed all the intersections, the times. They looked so at crack. What's the traffic data then? Do we have that before us? Do we know? Or the planning board? Have? The planning board has that. In the town's engineer, which we paid for their services, reviewed our 231-page report, had comments. The t the our engineer then submitted updated comments. Your engineer, the town's engineer, then reviewed everything and then issued his letter recommending approval. Um, with the conditions that we pay for the road safety audit and things like that. Okay. So those things have been addressed, knowing how many parking spaces were there, knowing the nine foot wide spaces, and knowing the number of units. Right. That's all based on that information. Right. So a professional traffic engineer has reviewed that and um, suggested the planning board support it and approve it, which they did approve the site plan. So the, the professional, so they did all approve this. They said it was safe. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, yes, they, I mean, obviously, no matter what you put into Sorry, this building. Well, all I need to know is, I mean, I, I'm just asking you really where everybody's going to park. Um, because that is something they have to decide. They have to decide if it's safe for the actual area. And so we're boarding on one side, um, I think, an intersection that's dangerous. And on the other side is this commercial um, district with stores. And some of the business people are happy with it, and some of them are not. And presumably those that are not are maybe concerned that it's going to be parking there. And that's, I think, not an unreasonable um, suggestion, because you know you have 110 apartments and you've got 154 parking places. So that's right. if, a, if a chap does have two cars, which I agree is probably unlikely, but um, if they do have two cars, then we're going to have a problem here in parking. Not only the owner would have a problem. Right. You know, if, if, if their tenants come home at night and can't find a parking space, you've got a problem. People are not going to rent there. You're going to lose tenants. So that's why it's in her own best interest to manage the, the building and the parking area. It, it, it's what currently happened always happens you know that's how you manage multifamily use or use properties that's what they're doing over in Rockland at Emerson Shoe um, it is again the 1.3 has been something that we always strive for at least 1.25 parking spaces we have 1.3 um, right next door across the street on Birch Street there's 30 units I believe it's 30 units and 37 spaces they're not parking on the street there it, it's managed it works well um, but the size the special permit to grant the nine feet allows you to maximize the number of parking spaces to your point. If you denied the special permit, you would lose a good 15 to 20 parking spaces and you would probably, this, frankly, this whole renovation project would probably fail and the building will remain vacant. So I hope you will support this as the police chief and fire chief and others have done. Are we all set, guys? Yeah, okay. thank you. Um, okay, you're gonna open up to the floor. Anybody? Okay, closing it to the floor, back to the board. I just had one more question here. Oh, go right ahead, yep. The intersection that Dennis brings up to me is, by my standards, one of the worst in town because you have to keep on inching up, inching up, checking both ways, checking for it, and then checking over from Bemis. Is there any way that you could be dealing with the people at that corner and intersection to knock those shrubs down? That's actually a zoning violation. We've brought that up. And again, sorry, uh, not to, I didn't write up the marsh. Uh -oh. We brought this up in our I'm conversation. So, I'm sorry, Mr. Adams. No, there is a provision in the bylaw that if you own a corner lot that your shrubberies or fences can't be more than two feet high or whatever. Um, so you can see over them. Um, that's private property. It's not our property. That right. The town would have a right, I think, to go there and say zip them down. That, I would assume, is going to be certainly one of the conclusions of the road safety audit that something has to be done at that corner yeah. with those I, shrubs i don't have a problem if that happens because that i mean to me right. that's serious that's number one easiest thing that could be done in five minutes and that makes a, a big safety issue from the board standpoint all right put a complaint in i'll take <laughs> care of <laughs> okay. yes, Tom. Hold on. Okay. right now all right so um i think uh, we've kicked it around enough um we've had a very long conversation I think we're all satisfied. So, um, anyone would like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion on the petition of, how am I saying this? Shaki Yumi? Shaki Yamuni. LLC 150 Farm Street, Dover, for a special permit under 17538E to allow for nine foot wide parking spaces at 10 Railroad Street. The property is located on Assessor's Map 53, Lot 7, 117, in the CBD. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for your time, gentlemen. Um, hopefully we'll get this project rolling very quickly so that they can do a lot of renovations. Good luck. Thanks. And that has no bearing on the system, solar system. No. It's that all the water and sewage. Yeah. Okay. I get no it. bearing. Okay. Do you have everything? All right. Okay. The Avenue Zoning Board of Appeals will hear the petition of Chris and Michelle Mayberger, 398 Ashland Street, Abington. For a finding per Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 6, an appeal of the building inspector's decision to build single story 16 by 24 and a half addition to an existing structure, left hand side of existing office building at 398 Ashland Street, 17569, properly located on Assessor's Map 8, Lot 72, in the highway commercial zone. Hi there. Let's see, any bearings here, let's see. No bearing on the source system. Okay. How you doing? Okay. What do you got? Uh, 
essentially what he just said. Uh, my name is Chris Mayburgers, my wife Michelle. Uh, we currently reside at 398 Ashland Street. Uh, we have a personal residence there as well as a second building um, on the lot that uh, houses our dog kennel, uh, daycare and boarding. Uh, we're just looking to um, overrule, this, so to speak, the building inspectors um, ruling that we cannot build an addition. We want to build an addition on the left-hand side of the what we call the <coughs> office building out in the back of the property. Um, that's my story. And I think we <laughs> had to go out and get the surveyor and provide you yeah, with all of the paperwork and down. for us to go through that process. And sure. the instructions pre-existing non-conforming. Yeah. And that's the word. what they're proposing does not increase an existing or create a new non-conforming. If it was a one and two family, they would be entitled to a building permit. But it's not a one or two family. Therefore, uh, it is anything that they want to do increasing the size requires a finding from the board um, that it's not substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. And what they're proposing is not. And unfortunately, um, we have to go through this exercise. If they were uh, intensifying existing nonconformity, then there'd have to be a finding in a special permit from your board. And if they were creating a new, then it would be a variance. But uh, because it's pre existing nonconforming and it is not a one or a two family, and this leads us back into the Gale v. Gloucester and uh, Dedrick Chatham case, et cetera, um, all they're looking for is a finding which I feel is appropriate in this case. They're uh, not um, uh, creating any new nonconformities. It's just you have to look at it and say, yep, we're putting on this uh, 6 by 24 addition on the other side of the structure. The only question I had on your decision here or thought process, you're going to be like how many feet from the property line? To yeah, your what is the footage on that? Uh, there's, there's it looks plenty. like you're right. Like two feet? Is it 42? Now the existing building? Yes. Uh, on the right-hand side borders the, um, the property line. But right. the addition is going on the left-hand side. Right. Which leaves us, I'm not sure if it's 30-something feet or... To the, to no, the it doesn't look like it on this plan. You oh, have. yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's, I, I it's do, very far from I don't from see the a the number there. Very far yeah, from it doesn't the come anywhere line. near a, a encroachment. According to this, uh, you're look right on the line. Does it? Oh, Just no. about no. within. You're looking at something. Must be looking at. I think we're looking at. Somebody else is looking at too and had that confused as well as so where where is that? Okay, then that I feel that. Going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we have actually parking no, area. See what I'm saying? This is the addition right here. That's existing. This is the addition. Okay. This is the existing okay. structure. Okay. And this okay. is a, it's like a six by twenty-four. Edition. Right. Sixteen, I think. Sixteen. Sixteen. By is that what that yeah. says? Yeah. I mean, it's right. it's drawn on here. I, I get it now. They're yeah. way off. Yeah. I mean, it looks kind of strange on and the, the on this other curve. thing is that this was a residential area at some time in the past, and then they somebody allowed it to be become commercial the two buildings you and the neighbor um, in the past I believe it always was yeah. it's, it's well, dual zoned res yeah. commercial well no, it's an R20 um, uh, an R I think it's an R20 yeah right? something like that okay <laughs> the point yeah. being it is residential now it's it's still zoned. It, no no I'm not okay. I'm not right. disagreeing with you I'm just no, saying no, somebody no. in the past it's HC. Yeah. I believe this is yeah. it's HC is it this is our yeah. commercial I was told. And just yeah. down a little bit down then comes some, R20 but uh, it's, it's pre-existing non-conforming. It requires a finding, and they're not. Uh, yes. Uh, they're not in, uh, creating any new or in right. I creating uh, any existing. It's just a finding. So, Marshall, the non-conformity is because it's a second principal building, or the because it's on. The that it also appears that uh, it's on the property the line. Rear building is too close on the right. The yep. front building is too close on the left. Um, yeah. Not and we don't need to go into any identifying any more potential nonconformities in terms of frontage or anything else. Yeah. It just is what it is, and it's nonconforming. And what they're proposing doesn't create anything new or or increase any existing, so it requires a finding. Okay, that would be like the Deidre case. So yes. Okay. I don't, um, have, I don't have any further questions. Okay. Anybody else? I'm good. Okay, can we open up to the floor, please? Anybody? Mr. Jones? Yeah. 
My name is David Kelly. I'm an attorney. I have an office at 45 Braintree Hill Office Park, Suite 200, Braintree, Massachusetts. I'm representing two neighbors, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Melvin Tibbetts and Mrs. Cooney Kennery. Also here is Justin Tibbetts. They are direct abutters. Uh, the Tibbetts are at 38 Constitution Avenue, directly behind uh, the subject property. It's referenced on your plan. And Mrs. Kennery is at 52 Constitution <coughs> Avenue, uh, also a direct abutter uh, at the rear of the property. The finding you, you need to find tonight under 40A, Section 6, and I'll just, I'll just read the sentence that's the operative sentence here. It says, no extension or alteration shall be permitted unless there is a finding by the special permit granting authority that such change, extension, alteration shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. So I would agree that the non-conforming structure and the proposed addition are relatively not substantial and not detrimental. If it were an accounting office or a bookkeeper's office, some kind of an office, um, I don't think that that would be substantially detrimental. This is a dog kennel. And I, I presume it's licensed as a dog kennel. I haven't looked at the license, and I don't know if the license restricts the number of dogs. But this is not an office. When you, when you read the application, there's a section in the application that specifically references the existing use. And there's no reference there to a dog count. So what I would submit, and, and my clients submit, is that this increase is going to intensify the use. The nonconformity of the structures not substantial in my opinion. I think it's a relatively minor um, proposed addition. But the use is not a typical use. It's a dog town. It creates noise. Uh, there are dogs. The, the, the abutting property is a daycare center or child care center. In the afternoons, there's, there's noise. Uh, my clients are elderly. They're infirm. And they suggest to you that it is substantially more detrimental than the non-conforming use to the neighborhood. Um, I uh, have a copy of, of the, the applicant's website, which I'll we'll hand out. And the, la the last page is a photograph from the website but, you know, of the rear area you know, indicating you know, that it's a dog park, dog resort, dog kennel, or whatever you want you to refer to it as. But it's not, not as, yes. it's, it's not as simple as saying it's an addition to an office. Uh, it's going to intensify the use, which is going to create more noise. Um, so the finding you're required to find in order to grant this extension of the nonconformity is a finding that it's not more detrimental to the neighborhood. Constitution Avenue is a residential zone R30, I believe. Uh, the subject property is uh, highway commercial. So it's a simple factual thing. Uh, you either think intensifying this use is detrimental to the residential neighborhood behind it, or it isn't. Thank you. I don't know if um, any of my clients would like to speak. They're not required to. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Justin Tibbetts, 30 Constitution Now. Um, that land originally was residential years and years and years ago. If I remember correctly, the change was given for a man that made pool games. Ed Marrier. Yes. For then that. the dog kennel came. Then the play school came in. And we listened to dogs for half of the day and screaming children for the other half of the day. We're hoping to keep the noise level as it is, because I assume this space, at least I don't know, I assume, would be used for more dogs. That's our position. Thank you. What else? Yeah. 
Eric Beltran of Golf Constitution app. So I am directly behind. Um, I don't have a copy of the plan, but I did make a picture here. Yep. That's me. That's the existing, that's the driveway coming in. Don't even get me started on with the parking spaces. <laughs> um, so I'm right behind them. And the noise from dogs is terrible. The noise from people screaming at the dogs is just as bad. What really does it in for me is when my children, six, eight, and nine, are getting yelled at on their playground because being on their playground, the dogs see them and the dogs go out of control. This is the view from the kids creative at playthings. As you can see, the stuff there, the buildings, the structures there aren't even finished. So is your property higher? Is it at higher elevation? Is this, this is uh, from the um, kids' playground. Okay. So yeah, that's like four or five feet okay. looking in. What are we looking at? We're looking at this is from my kids' playground in the backyard, looking over. That's looking down into the dog area. Yeah, I mean, it's from a crate of thing, so it's, uh, the deck is like this high. Um, and it's still solid 15, 20 feet from the, the property line. Um, so the, but yeah, so but the, you can see. So anytime they're up there, they'll see so the dogs go nuts, and then everybody's getting yelled at. Um, and that's not good. Right. Uh, and just, you know, generally the noise is just a bit, it's going to be a detriment to the, to the entire neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Do you want that picture back? We'll just let them just let them look at it, and they can take it back if you want. There's constitutions, so and this is it right here. Keep that. I'll just grab the second page. What's yeah. your, your house size? So my house is right here. Playground is right about at that blue spot right there. And, and this is the um, this is the uh, kennel. Isn't that the kids? Kids get up and play. No, no, the kennel is two, two buildings. The spot is the playground. Mm -hmm. so, there. Yeah. So here's my house. Here's the playground right in here. Mm -hmm. Kids on. And then this the whole the property line comes back here and yeah that building is right on the property line. That's where they want to this, yeah, yeah. And throw things this is the kennel. And then Jamie. This is all kennel. So down. what's your name again? Eric, tell Thank you. Thanks. You, you keep that for for this. All right. Uh, anybody else? Okay, we're we'll close to the floor. Bring it back to the board. Um, Are we able to speak to or? I actually have a question for the okay. applicants. So right, exactly. Go right ahead. Okay. Is that going to be? Is that what you're proposing to use this additional structure for? Is what I'm hoping to dogs? do is have the additional structure because what ends up happening is. We have the dogs, they're out playing, but we're able to have another playroom. That's literally what we're looking to do, so that they're able to come in for a playroom. It starts raining out, whatever the case is, weather related. We have another playroom that they're able to come in and be inside. So it's not like we're looking to add to what we have, but the space-wise, it's right now it's a thousand square feet inside for them to be in. So again, weather related, whatever the case is, they're able to come in and play indoors as well as be outdoors. It gives us more options. I have a very small parking lot, so it's not like I can just keep growing and growing. We don't, as he was just proposing over at the old art building, 100 and something parking spaces, we probably have four or five because my employees park and I can't expand it that much more on that side. <coughs> It's and literally for the playroom and to give us more space inside. And I'm assuming the kennel's licensed by the town? Yes. Okay. And is there anything in the licensing provision about the number of dogs you can have in terms well, of? For over, we can have 20, up to 25 dogs sleeping over it overnight for overnight kenneling. How about for the day? Is there anything? I haven't been regulated on that. I only do what my yards and my staff can handle. And so you're not anticipating expanding that use at all in terms of? Among no, I, I've been told that for um, town of Abington, it's for overnight kenneling, it's up to 25. You can condition it. Mm -hmm. And uh, on average, how many dogs you, do you have a day? So you figure for the boarding side of things, 
we always maintain that for it's daycare, it, for their overnight board. Yeah. You know, there's never ever any, any overnight boarders over the 25. We're not always at 25, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, absolutely not. But for daycare, obviously, I and mean, we're going to average. I'd say we probably average about 40 a day. Okay. Did you say 30 or 40? 40. 30 to I think 35 to 40 um, is our daycare average dogs. for daycare. Yes. I suppose we would ask, do you envisage there's going to be more than 40 with this? I'm not looking for it to, I'm looking for it to be more user friendly. What we've done in our play yards is made it as user friendly as possible for the dogs. We have artificial turf so it drains well um, with regards to obviously them urinating and going to the bathroom. We've tried to expand the gate yard so that we have proper sizes in our yards. I have, I think somebody had posted something with regards to the um, um, to the, the sounds and things that they hear. We have the different dogs in the different yards with their activities. We conform during a business day. I actually have the dogs nap for a few hours. So someone had said that they listen to kids for half the day and dogs for the other half. But again, the dogs are coming for daycare and they're just like kids are excited. We have a girl that's in every play yard trying to chaperone and supervise. With regards to, um, unfortunately, my neighbor that abuts us, my main manager um, has gone out and, in a very nice way, as cons and it happens quite often, unfortunately, the kids are kids and they get up on the play structure and they see the dogs and they love the, hey guys, and they'll yell to the dogs. Well, what do dogs do? They bark. So my manager, man uh, Jamie, will come out quite often and say, guys, please don't throw things over to the dogs, you get them excited. And they have told us quite often that their dad hates dogs. And unfortunately, we abut each other. So we're as respectful as possible, especially on weekends. Because again, we know that he's, dad's home, he hates dogs, the kids are up there, and we are as respectful as can be. But unfortunately, their kids, his children's structure is right there at the gate and kids love dogs so we do what we can and we try to say to them please guys don't throw anything over don't get them going but they do so I've never heard my manager yell at the kids other than guys please don't yell at the dogs can I ask um, if it rains where do the dogs go? Do you have an inside place to bring them in? Uh, when, if it, yeah. If it rains? They come inside, but then obviously it's not as, um, um, they're not able to spread out and really play and everything. It's more being more contained because it's a small indoor facility. We have multiple rooms. It's set up like a little ranch house. So again, if we had, let's say all of a sudden, I, just last week I remember the, the sky opened up for a good 10 minutes and everybody had to come running in. So we're able to get everyone situated. We have different rooms, but it's not an ideal. Let's say it rained for four hours straight. Having another playroom would still make it a daycare day for the dogs in a very more contained setting. And that's why we've been looking to do the um, extension. I got one question. Did you meet with the neighbors at all to discuss your plans? No, no. but at the, at the same time, we've never heard any complaints since we've been there. Um, other than have you thought of making a higher fence um, the fences are eight feet tall six, stockade they're fences. already but I mean no, they're stockade six foot mm -hmm. yeah the six foot stockades but my point is to mm -hmm. keep the kids from looking in type uh, deal kind of a buffer zone maybe shrubbery or something on the outside uh, there's, there's shrubbery between the fence and his house um, just maybe what? not quite tall enough yeah their um, their their play structure is really high mm -hmm. so it kind of they look and look right down at the eight stock eight foot stockade right how over it you, how many years you've been in business we've owned it for four years but happy dog was um, existent there since 2002 wow mm -hmm. And in terms of the, the addition that you're building, have you consulted with anybody about any type of like soundproofing material that you could utilize? The or yard like is that? For, no, the for the outside? For the building. For the oh. building. No. No, but I don't think, they, again, when they're inside and um, it's, uh, we have chaperones for all the dogs, it's not like they're just, you know, thrown in there and told to be good, and which they never would be. They, if they were inside playing on a rainy day, I have staff that's with the dogs in groups. So, like, there's little dogs that hang out in one room, and there would be, again, having this extra room, let's say, on a bad day, it would be a contained group of one in one room. And then we have another playroom. That's a, what's, the, what's the size of that one? 
I have no idea. 15 yeah, but it's, 25. Yeah, something like that. So now it would be more contained where they'd be inside on a on a ugly rainy day. That so. part of the addition, that part of the building, would also be further away from the neighbors than the rest of the building. Mm -hmm. It's almost actually moving away from them. Yes. Okay. So so basically, what we're talking here about here is you want to put this addition on for more room for the dogs, but you're not talking about expanding your your business. We're not going to go out and advertise to get more dogs because we're putting the addition on now. And and besides, I mean, uh, that's pretty much maxed out. Uh, as it is. Right. And <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and this is TV. This is live. So I mean, there may be someone coming out and taking a look too. So just keep that in mind. I mean, yeah. um, uh, you really need to work with your neighbors here. That's for sure. I mean. You're gonna have to do something for the neighbors. Yeah. The only, Help them the out. I wasn't neighbor, aware of yeah. anybody that was un unpleased except for Mr. Erica. Well, they have a lawyer here. Um, they're unpleased. I, I get that. Yeah. Um, what we see right here is, and you're explaining to us that the addition is for the dogs that you have now, not to expand your business. Correct. And that, that's that's we have focusing. several people in the neighborhood who actually bring their dogs to us that live right there. Yes. All right. So, what would uh, your um, your your thoughts, I guess, be if if there was this the special permit was granted upon the condition that you it's not finding special finding. Special I'm sorry. It's not when uh, the conditions we, on a finding. We can't yeah. condition a finding. I don't believe so. Aren't they it's looking for a special, special permit, permit under 175.69? No, I believe it's a finding. We're just. Yep. Yeah, I thought they had two. No, it is a finding. We have it. Well, there's no strictly permit. a finding. All right. Yeah, I was surprised to see 175.69 listed in the advertisement, oh. but there's no language attached to it. Is there, um, so noise is obviously an issue for the that out was, um, Is there was that um, a way that we can reduce the noise? I know they already do a very good job of trying to reduce the noise. It's hard to get a dog not to bark when he wants to. Yeah. Um, particularly in the mornings, I know we gazely open at 7. It'd be better if it's frozen at, at six because we could get more people to come in that need to go to work earlier. But we don't. We don't no. take it. We take into consideration the neighbors on that well, point. Of, you know, trying to get we get the dogs out at seven. So a, we're fine. We're going to get up right. to eight it's on a weekend right. um, just to try and keep that down. But as soon as they hit that door, their first time off the door, they're going to want to run and edit their, their, their back a little bit. We're trying to keep them down. And yeah, the girls have to be a little vocal in order to be to keep the vocal of the dog down. You know. I think I think they're. I, if I had to say, the loudest time that they probably are is probably more on the nine to eleven, because again, in dog daycare, the reason why a lot of people bring their dogs to work for two reasons: the social, to burn that energy, or if they work long d days, and obviously the dog is going to be able to get out. So what normally happens is from seven to eight thirty, people are dropping off, getting to the commuter rail, whatever the case is. Dogs are going out, mingling, and I'd say by 9 o'clock or so, we start to have the majority of our guests there. Well, the girls' job is to kick it up and play with them, let them burn their energy, and the ball is getting thrown, and they're out having a great time. And then by 11, 11.30, they're as quiet, they should be pretty as quiet as can be because they've burned it. And that means the girls have supervised them well, done their jobs. But some of them, you could have a Tuesday could be qu uh, quieter than a Wednesday because Wednesday's crew is a little more rowdy and a little more excitement. But everybody's job is to do their very best to keep them to a uh, minimum. Well, Am I know? able to address the neighbors and kind of ask? I would strongly yeah. recommend that. I mean, that now or, or, no, or no, no, not no, now. I mean, okay. uh, uh, regardless of what happens tonight, I would strongly, yep. strongly recommend that you work with them because you it, you need to get along. Absolutely. Right. What about offense? What about a rich men? I brought it up, but you, well, what well, about again? A stronger fence the, in the rear of the yard. There's um, only one that abuts us that that's right there, right. and that's the the, the Mr. He, I'm sorry, I forget his name. That just came up, and that's his right. children's but, playground but is there. The other people can hear too. Right, right, the other people in the back. I'm um, not sure where is, they are. It's got to be 75, 200 feet from my fence, from from the rear fence of the dog yards. You know, we get we get about three quarters of an acre of land there. Right. Um, oh, so, so but did the dogs go out to that land? Yeah. No, no. Okay. They're like I said, it's about a hundred feet from the back of my property, probably. Yeah. The, the beginning of the dog yards. Still, I mean, forty dogs um, 
25 dogs in the house and 40 dogs outside. That sounds a little bit loud to me. Um, it, it, can, do you it can be, sure, yeah. <laughs> if they're all going at the same time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and presumably more accommodation would actually give them more room to, um, you know, to, to go, if you're talking about inside, that they'd be inside. But do you think it would help if you had um, um, a, a higher, stronger fence? What kind of fence do you have? It's a six-foot six stockade. Yeah. Six foot stockade. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of that eight foot. Isn't it eight? That would no. oh, six foot. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we, we yeah. can't, we can't well, make it do anything I'm on that right. pot. So, yeah, I, does so that we're going really to get notes? back to um, what we originally came here for. Here yep. to yep. whether the uh, is going to be not be substantially more detrimental than the existing use or structure to the neighborhood. Okay. That's what's being asked. All right, so we need to make a, a decision here on this. Um, again, thank you. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, let's make a decision here. Okay. okay. Anybody want to make a motion? We'll discuss it. So I feel um, the neighbor's points are, are valid. I'm not sure I'd, I'd want to. 30, 40 dogs in my locust barking away. Um, but that exists now. Um, if the owners are true to their word and they're not expanding to 50 dogs or, or more, um, and, and the proposal is really just to create additional indoor space for the dogs and not, again, for business expansion purposes, I don't have a, um, a problem with this. Um, uh, and so I guess that's where I'm sitting on this. And I think you really need to work with your neighbors. Um, obviously, they're here for a reason. Um, that's all I have to say on that. Um, no, I agree. I mean, if it was just in terms of the use, as you said, they're it's existing as it is now I mean they're not they're not changing it I would love to condition this in in terms of there be no expansion of the business or set a limit in, in terms of the amount of dogs they could have during the day but it doesn't appear we have the authority to do so so we're just yeah. relying on you to be a good neighbor and work with your neighbors and do what you can in terms of well we recognize that we li that we are located in a residential area yeah. so we most definitely do. Well, it's close to the uh, yeah it's, mm -hmm. I'm sorry it's close to the floor um, so do we want to make a motion on this? On the petition of um, Chris and Michelle Mayberger, 398 Ashland Street, um, for the finding for Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 6, referencing 17569, um, in regards to the appeal of the building inspector's decision to build a single story 16 by 24 and a half addition to the existing structure on the left-hand side of the building at 398 Ashland Street be approved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And can this be appealed? Marshall, Aye. can this be appealed? Yeah. Just yes, this, uh, yeah. this will go in 21 yeah. days. Uh, 20 okay. days down to the... Uh, yeah, but it'd be appealing your appeal, so that would go to the state level, wouldn't it? Um, Appealing to find him. Yes. No. It's no. I uh, I refused, and uh, they got the, they have received the finding. Yeah. The finding now would be re put down at right. the uh, report mm. down to the clerk's office, and then they could appeal that. Okay. The sure. finding because there was nothing. Yeah. They came and got it. And All right. That, that could be appealed. 21, 20 days down to the clerk's office. I believe. So it, it's not always, it takes a while to get to the clerk's office to see you know. Well, it could so be a week or whatever, whatever. Right, they can get it, it can get typed up and so signed so. and down to the clerk's office and stamped in and that's when the clock starts ticking. Okay, again, um, I really think you need to talk to your neighbors and Is try to work it out. Is that something we do now or we get um, information? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whenever okay. you want to, but we're all set here. You can, we're all set. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hear the petition of Christopher O'Neill, 70 Diane Circle, Abington, for a variance under 17514 to allow one common driveway for two proposed single-family homes on 9.4 acres of land, 
special permit under 17535 to work within the local floodland pre protection wetland protection district floodplain wetland protection district and waiver of environmental impact statement at 41 orchard lane property located on assessor's map 2937 Lots 3444A in the R20 zone. And this says, let's see, uh, proposal subject to system development fees must be paid prior to building sign off. I just want to say that I live on Diane Circle. I've never met you guys before. Oh, I, hi. How are you? I'm on the other side. So I, I, I've never met you before. So I just want to make that clear to the board and okay. clear to everyone. Um, and just to be clear. That's where Chris lives, but the property we're talking about is not on Diane Circle. So. Oh, yeah. No, yes. that's, yes. Right. I'm just saying, I just want to mention that right, thank I live you. on Diane, Diane Circle. You haven't been over for a barbecue? No. I, okay. I'm telling you, I never, veg I never visit that side. Yeah, it's two different worlds. Yeah, it's, two not different worlds. it's not a circle. <laughs> it's not a it's circle. It's not a circle. the <laughs> strangest thing in the world, dude. Okay. Sorry. Sean, uh, Sean Riley, 5 on Washington Street. With me tonight is Chris O'Neill to my immediate right and his brother Greg O'Neill to my far right. Um, uh, under Chris's name, the O'Neill brothers have filed this petition here with the zoning board uh, for the property up behind uh, 41 Orchard Lane. I, I know we've submitted plans to you along with the application uh, to give you a kind of a bird's eye view and eyeball, but if I could just read out the, uh, the brothers Chris and Greg O'Neill proposed to construct two new homes for each of their families on a 9.4 acre parcel of land. A single driveway would be constructed from Orchard Lane to the private homes, which would be set back approximately over 600 feet from Orchard Lane. A variance would be needed, however, to allow one shared driveway. The lots otherwise comply with all other zoning dimensional requirements. One lot would be 2.5 acres, the other one would be 6.9 acres. Without the driveway variance, the O'Neill brothers would be required to construct either two separate 600-foot driveways, one for each house, or a public road that would go out back and could be up to a five-lot subdivision. Due to the presence of wetlands and ledge, which is shown on the plan, the cost of the two driveways or a roadway would be significantly higher than the cost of a single driveway. A driveway variance would also require less disturbance and replication of wetlands. If the variance and special permit are approved, the applicant would then file a detailed driveway and wetland mitigation plan with the Conservation Commission for their review and approval. Um, just so we're clear, we're here under section 175-14, and the relevant provision says, for any residential dwelling unit, the driveway access to all principal buildings shall be from the same location on which the required lot frontage is located. So basically, a driveway has to connect to the street within your frontage, okay? The O'Neill brothers have two completely conforming lots. They have frontage, they have lot width, they have lot area. The lots conform. So they could build two 600-foot plus long driveways, but it would be a huge, expense and it would look somewhat silly what they're proposing is to have a common driveway that would lead out back the 600 plus feet and then branch off into the towards the two separate houses but to do that you need a variance under the terms of the bylaw because obviously there'd be one driveway connection to the road so it's either one or the other frontages you understand what i'm saying there mm -hmm. um it seems to in our mind is uh, sorry conforms to all the variant standards Owing to the circumstances relating to soil conditions or topography of the land, there's a large swath of wetlands that you have to cross in order to get to the buildable area. Again, it's a 9.4 acre parcel. Um, so you're going to go in and fill wetlands and replicate wetlands. We would like to minimize that by using one driveway. But a variance is needed from this board to minimize the wetland disturbance. Literal enforcement of the bylaw would create substantial hardship, financial or otherwise. I think it's pretty blatantly obvious that building two driveways through wetlands is more expensive if not twice as expensive than one driveway and desirable relief in the form of variance could be granted without substantial detriment to the public good without nullifying or derogating from the intent of the bylaw it's certainly not going to substantially be a detriment to the public good if anything it's going to be more in conformity with some of the other lots we're not going to have a, two driveways running next to each other where that really frankly doesn't exist up in this area of orchard lane and broad metal um, Greg lives on Broad Meadow right now. He'd like to relocate to this area off of, well, technically he'd have a driveway, he'd have an address of Orchard Lane. Um, it, you know, this, this variance actually allows them to build less. Less pavement, less houses. The two houses instead of building a roadway out there. Um, we would hope you would approve this. 
Uh, I know that um, Mr. Uh, maybe is here who owns the, the, the property out front that we'll be building out back. I won't speak for him, but, but I know he, he is here and he's in support. I did submit plans that show you approximately where the driveways could be located. Um, I would submit to you that your approval, if you were to be inclined to approve this variance, and I hope you would in the special permit, would be subject to obviously the direction and the approval of the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission may dictate exactly where they want that driveway to line up. So what I show you here is an artist's rendering of it. Um, obviously, it's got to go across it to get to the open area out back. You can see it's a significant open area out back. Um, so we can't go to conservation, however, until we get feedback from you as to whether you want us to build two driveways or one driveway. I think for the reasons we've stated, we conform and satisfy the requirements of a, of a, of a variance. It is the topography and the wetlands that become the issue that creates the financial hardship and the one driveway is in conformity with the other lots in, in the neighborhood. It would fr frankly look nicer. This is an example where a variance makes it a better finished product. Um, we're open to any questions. If you have any questions, Greg and Chris and I are here to try to answer it, but I hope you'll uh, uh, support their petition. Well, well there's this <coughs> one question. How come, you know, you, you're asking for this here? And you're giving us three little pitches. Um, how can we get a large pitch, a large drawing, a large plan? Yeah. I mean, every every proposal you bring in front of us has a large plan, so we can actually read it. Uh, it's kind of tough to read this one. Well, it's simply it's not a the details of the dimensions of the lot or whatever are not at issue here. I think it was really more of the number of driveways. I, I well, I just see that you have a. You have, you know, three different setups here, where you could where you could uh, build a, can build a what one two three four five lots, or two driveways or one driveway. Right. That was to try to show you. I'm I'm a visual guy. Sometimes I think it's easier to understand what we're proposing by seeing it, by looking at it. Um, so the obviously the one driveway versus two driveways. You can see that on the plan. And I showed you a, a, just a copy of a plan that Wheatley's office had prepared if they were to go to build a street. But it's just can't really kind of hard to read this one. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, anyone agree? Am I, am I wrong? Is there something on it that you want me to read to? Yeah. I, I don't understand what you're missing. Well, I, I, I can come back to us when you're building the homes or no. We wouldn't have to, no. We wouldn't have to because, uh, no. I mean, it seems like it's going to be a nightmare for the conservation commission. Um, it really isn't. It's actually really not a lot of land to build on, right? It's it's because you've got wetlands all around it. Mm -hmm. So this is the only time we're coming before the conservation, uh, the zoning board. Yeah, unless they need some sort of dimensional variance for some reason, which yeah. I don't foresee that because it's such a large parcel, we should be able to keep away from the lot lines. So it makes sense that you're just giving us um, a diagram just of where you're putting the driveway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, yeah. so so I drove by today and it's all woodlands. There's no there's no road in there right now. Correct. My question is, it's a conforming lots now. Yes. Right. So to make it non-conforming, it's, it's something that's frowned upon. We're not making the lots non-conforming. The lots conform. Well, okay. So We're not then changing the lots at all. <clears throat> there's enough frontage for two mm -hmm. properties. There's enough frontage. There's enough lot width. But the hardship. I don't see the hardship here. Uh, other than and you, you don't own the property at this, at this point. That does That's irrelevant, John. We're, well, we're, we're, we have a purchase and sale agreement, which let me. The hardship is the topography and the wetlands of this property. You have 9.4 acres. But right now, they're buildable lots. They're conforming. They're conforming lots to the zoning so bylaws. Other than the expense of putting in a driveway, that is the only issue. Correct. That is. One of the elements of the hardship, you, now you're looking at the second version, the, the second right. facet of financial or otherwise. Yes, there's obviously, I think we can agree that building two driveways, whether it's through wetlands or not, is more expensive than building one driveway, 600 feet plus. So financial hardship exists there. And because you're going through wetlands, it makes it more expensive because you have to conform the wetlands bylaw. You'll have to, uh, as you know, replicate wetlands, which there's plenty of room to do that. So the expense of doing it with two paved driveways and whatever earth movement is needed is significantly more than one driveway. I, I think the, that is an obvious fact there, an obvious factor also. 
And you're putting yeah. two houses in there with one driveway. Right. Now, just just to say, uh, uh, I mean, how do you sell that? How it's, do you sell that? It's not uncommon. In fact, you see it a lot with the million dollar houses in Norwell, where they have the private driveway and then it splits off. Um, it's, it's an agreement, but it's actually put into the deed, the common driveway access easement. It's not an uncommon thing. Um, in fact, some towns, frankly, some of the affluent towns, prefer those instead of roadways. Because then the homeowners are 100% responsible for the maintenance of that driveway. They own it. They, they share the plowing costs, they share the repaving costs. And I think anyway, well, it, right, this, right. this site is, is dominated by wetlands. The front so, part is, yeah. Yeah, so although it's true the Conservation Commission can order you to replicate, that's not the best way to do it. And actually the, the one way of doing one road through the wetlands is that's the least disturbance. So that's really what we would want you to one do. One driveway, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a very good project. It didn't have to be like that. You could have had two separate lots, two different owners, two It is two separate lots, though. Yeah, I know, but it could be two different owners, two, uh, two different contractors, right? So we're just lucky enough that we have, um, you actually have two lots that you own, and you're, wow. you're doing that. Uh, I, I, I think topography is a very big issue here. I, it's I undoubtedly, I mean, it's, really big issue. it's a wetland crossing, so it, it can... It triggers the, the requirements of a variance. And the thought of one driveway seems to be a better design for the town, the wetlands, and the owners than two driveways. And that's its only um, legal access? There's no, um, no frontage and no any easement or right of way or anything else that's bordering it? Right. What's the basis of us waiving the environmental impact statement? The environmental impact statement, to fill that out, you would, you would ask you, how much fill are you bringing in? Are you filling in any wetlands or whatever? I can't answer those questions until you give us feedback as to you want one driveway or two. If you want two driveways, it's a lot more fill. Mm -hmm. It's more wetlands to be filled. It's more wetlands to be replicated. So we can't fill out that form until we get guidance from you as to where we go from here. Okay. I mean, I, I, I personally think that, that two driveways is more practical than one, meaning that you have two two properties, two houses. You need a pro your own driveway going in. That's that's the way I look at it. Um, it's a huge lot. I think you'd see it actually on off of Orchard Lane, on the other end of Orchard Lane. There is private driveway with multiple houses off of it already in Abington. That, yeah, that, that, that I mean it was right there. No, but it certainly hasn't caused a detriment to the town or anything. It's, it's, it's privately owned and privately maintained. But again, it's two lots, and that's how, I don't know, I, I just don't see there's a hardship. In my opinion, there's no hardship here. Well, John, let me, I need it's to simple. push back. Do you see the wetlands? I, again, I'm talking about hardship. Right. Do you see the wetlands? Yeah. Right. And would you agree? Uh, we, we use that issue sometimes to work for or against an issue. In this case, I still think I'm going to stay, stay. Would you agree that building one driveway through the wetlands would be less expensive and less of an impact to the wetlands than building two driveways? Then why do any? Why do <laughs> any? Because it's 9.5 you know, acres. Right it's, they have the right to utilize the My question the land. is why do any? Do I, wow, I, well, I you're just it. saying you're giving me the way to go two, for, I mean one versus two. Why not none then? If that's the case of your concern. Well, I think you're trying to say is that there's there's two properties here, and you you, you think that the two properties should have separate driveways. Yeah. Very simple. Exactly. Very simple. Yeah, it is. Um, it is a big issue in Abington. Um, the environment, the loss of our wetlands, is a, a huge yeah. issue, um, and with this construction that's going on, um, we're constantly battling. Um, this is a rather inventive way of doing it. I know that you're concerned about the homeowners, the future homeowners, that they may have a problem with, um, you know, having one driveway, and, and that might be an issue. Um, but today, um, we have environmental problems where we're literally eradicating our wetlands. There are not many wetlands left in Abington. No. This is very, very serious. And I heard once Mr. Riley saying that, you know, this is the uh, entire Abington's at a wetland sometimes, right? Many people's houses are being flooded because of the construction. This is a very inventive way, um, uh, and it's also not um, uh, unique. And, and it is in Abington. There are many houses that are share roadways. This would be less of an impact. Yeah. If, if I may, can 
Can I speak? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, I just want to say, you know, keep in mind that the, the two the two owners, you know, are, are right here in front of you. We're, we're in agreement with it, and I understand that, you know, we're not going to be there forever. Exactly. But that would become our issue in the sale. If it brought down our property value or something like that, that, that would in, in turn be our, our problem. And the other, just the other quick side, I have met with the neighbors extensively. We've been working back there for almost a year and a half now at this point. Um, you know, it, it, the cost of two driveways, b besides taking up more of the wetlands, it would then make more sense to uh, go ahead and put in a full road and have five lots, sell off three to pay pay for the two. Then I know the neighbors were concerned about uh, water and filling that in. Um, well, you have the right to do that too. I mean, you show you showed us the, the third. Right. Yeah, you showed that to us. Mm -hmm. so. so we're I mean, saying it would be simpler. We'll have less of an impact in the on the area. We agree to to share the driveway. I mean, we'll definitely fight over who has to plow it, but um, <laughs> but it, but other than that, uh, you know, at the top, I, I would argue it's our problem when we go to sell that you know if, if it's less attractive to a buyer. Well, it's, more attractive, frankly. Well, more, yeah. A secluded house with a private driveway. That's all, and I, I understand what what you're saying about the two driveways. I do. I just. In just oh, sorry, in terms of the five lots, it, would they be, if they went ahead with the one driveway, they'd be prevented from then breaking up those two lots into separate lots from there, right? Well, you guys, that's, that's not what we're here talking. No, about. I know. We're, I'm just we're here to talk about the city. first, first, the yeah. first page, picture here. We're yeah. here to talk about this one driveway going into two properties. Well, but I think I think the reason we showed that is 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 to show you that we do not want to overbuild out back right I know, I know we see this a lot where where you know we have three different diagrams and we really should focus on the first one right well um, the intent is to show you that we are trying to utilize the the plan with the least impact that the one driveway with two houses as opposed to two drivers with two houses or one road with five houses right but still uh, we have to focus we have to focus on on the one driveway that's what we're here for we're not here to talk about Five houses. We're here to talk about the two driveways. Right. Right. Okay. So, anybody else? Uh, Marshall. No, I think you pretty well covered it. They have by right they can put in the subdivision. By right they can put in the two driveways. They're asking for uh, uh, a, a hardship variance to put in one driveway. Uh, um, uh, pretty well covers it. I mean. Um, the floor, I don't know. Yes. Um, anybody here? Yeah. Chris, we're just quite a larger. I have a concern now related to the wetlands. So I actually have bought most of the wetlands in the neighborhood. There's already a problem with you know, the amount of water that comes through there at times of the year, say spring, for example, where water doesn't drain off. Water, water kind of comes closer and closer to uh, my home, right? And water doesn't drain, so there's a bit of pooling in my yard as a result of it. By doing a driveway straight through wetlands down, down for me, I would expect would cause backup, making matters worse for me. So I wouldn't want to see any driveway there, quite honestly. Forget about one, two, or a main roadway. So that's my biggest concern. We want to talk about hardship. I would be the one that, in the whole neighborhood, to probably have the biggest hardship as a result of this construction taking place. So, and I've been here two years. I know you mentioned that you talked to neighbors. I, the first consult, not even consult, the first notification I got was to attend this meeting. So, okay. yeah. throw that out there. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, gentlemen on the board, my name is Paul Mink. I reside at 41 Orchard Lane. I've been uh, speaking to the O'Neill <coughs> brothers since the initial uh, thought to even build back in those lands. Um, I personally support their you know, desire to build one driveway as opposed to two. I think it's just common sense. You're going to be disturbing less wetlands if you're building one as opposed to two. Um, I've owned a house that takes on water before. It sucks. The last thing I want to do is to have someone else get flooded, myself get flooded, my neighbors get flooded. So as long as they're um, basically following par for the course as far as the conservation lands, the wetlands, adding proper drainage and ensuring that they're not going to make problems worse for myself and the neighbors. I'm on board for it, and uh, I feel they've been very transparent and direct and forward about that. Um, I know that there's been a group text between myself 
my neighbors to the left and across the street from me, uh, and then proceeding down towards Orchard Lane towards Hancock Street. So as far as you, sir, you were involved in that, I apologize, I've only been there for about a year and a half myself. Um, but we are trying to be very transparent and uh, hear everybody's gripes. So I really hope that if you guys do approve one, it's one as opposed to two. Thank you. Okay, we all set? Anybody else? If I, all right, well, back to the board and go right ahead. It just to respond, Mr. Bridges brings up a common concern always about water. You know, water is always an issue, and it'll be an issue for Mr. 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 <laughs> O'Neill. Mr. and Mr. O'Neill. Um, obviously, whether we build one or two driveways, it has to be fully engineered and approved by the Conservation Commission to address the issues that he did bring up and that the other <coughs> also brought up. The issue here right now is we have a right to build two driveways through the wetlands. Legal right to do that, and we get approval for conservation. The zoning board can help us to minimize that and allow us to build one driveway with a variance. It seems to be a better plan, as I said, a lower impact plan. It makes more sense for a plan, but we, the way the zoning bylaw is written, we need this board to vote for the variance in the special permit. Thank you. Um, back to the board. Um, I don't like the idea of the, the one driveway. I don't. But two two pieces of property, so that's where I stand. So I don't mind the idea, especially given the sensitivity of the of the uh, the property they have to tra traverse to get to the buildable lots. Um, you know, once again, you know, I look at you know prong one on on what you need for a variance, um, soil shape and topography. I think the lot hits that. Um, you know, this, this soil shape and topography create a hardship. Um, given as Mr. Bergen referenced that uh, every time, you know, the, the town, I mean, we get the beaver on the, on the logo, you know, there's only about five people who don't have sump pumps in there, in their basements. Um, and, and it seems every time we develop, we're, we're altering wetlands. And <clears throat> Most of the time, it doesn't affect people. Occasionally, it does, and I think the less we affect wetlands, the better. And I think in this instance, um, I would rather see a, you know, 12 foot wide driveway, you know, or whatever 12, 15 foot wide driveway there than, you know, a 35 foot wide road, or or two driveways. I mean. You know, I, I, I don't know, I think it's far enough back, 600 feet's far enough back, and it does a, you know, a dog leg right, you know, so you don't really even see the houses from the street. So, you know, it's not like a standard lot where you're going to see one driveway and just two things, and you think it's like some little, some little development. So, I think in general, I don't like one driveway for multiple properties, but I think also why, why we sit on this board is because every parcel is different in the town. Yeah, can I ask as a point of procedure for you tonight? If the, um, I would hope you'd approve both the variance and the special permit, but if you were inclined not to do so, I would ask that you would approve the special permit because regardless of whether it's one or two driveways, the special permit would be required to move forward, but it would be, as I mentioned, subject to the conservation's direction and authority. Uh, we would hope you'd approve at least the special permit. I really hope that you also approve the variance. Thank you. So special permit is, is <coughs> permission to work uh, right. in the floodplain wetland protection district and waiver of the uh, environmental impact statement. That's what you're referencing. Mm -hmm. right. uh, Andrew? No, I, I agree uh, with Mr. Mullen. I think it meets a condition for a variant. So I would be inclined um, to grant one in this case. And I mean, given the neighborhood, I, it's not uncommon in that neighborhood to have shared driveways as well. So, but I think the mitigation to the wetlands um, would be beneficial. I see I don't agree with that because they both conforming right now so they are uh, they meet the topography shape uh, so the only thing now it's a financial issue and for the longer driveway uh, in my opinion it's not a hardship Dennis 
Well, Mr. Berg. I, I don't have a vote, but um, at the, for the variance, we have four issues. Um, so the circumstances relating to soil conditions and topography, I think it's obvious that topography is a big issue here. Um, it's really a, land a wetland locked um, area. Um, not affecting the general zone, I think they're mitigating, trying to do as little, small as beautiful. Um, and are trying to do as little as possible. Literal enforcement will involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise. Otherwise, here is what I would emphasize. Not financial so much. I mean, it is costly to do a second road, but for the greater good, it's actually costly to our environment to have a second road. And then relief without substantial detriment to the public good or nullifying the intent of the bylaw. So I, I think um, either of those, you can overcome that. And the special permit, so I would actually look twice at the special permit because um, I think we should always do a report. But here, they are actually going straight from here to the Conservation um, Commission. Um, so not injurious to public welfare, I don't believe it is that. The second one is not overload public systems, it doesn't. Parking is a good example of how it would. This is a good example of how it wouldn't. And causing undue traffic. Now that might be an issue, and that's where Richie talked about, you know, every house should have its own driveway, and there might be undue traffic. But <coughs> I think, you know, there's less space in our town. More and more we're going to see um, houses sharing roadways. And as Mr. Riley said, it's not such a bad idea. Um, you know, except maybe for the homeowner, because the homeowner, of course, is responsible for that road but um, but I think it overcomes the three special permit requirements and it overcomes your four variance requirements that's my suggestion all right um, Marshall you want to throw anything in there no um, it's, uh, it's all been laid out very well as to what uh, what's being asked for and what the options are not my decision Uh, I'll make a motion to allow the petition of Christopher O'Neill, 70 Diane Circle, Abington for a variance under 175.14 to allow one common driveway for two proposed single family homes on 9.5 acres of land, special permit under 175.35 to work within the flood FPWP district and waiver of environmental impact statement at 41 Orchard Lane. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Can I ask just for the record, are you sure. voting no against both of them? No, I'm not voting. Uh, uh, for the special permit, yes. Yes. Okay, okay. so die the variance and approve the special permit. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All Thanks right. for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you. Have a date with my wife. <laughs> Excellent. Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hear the petition of Mary Elizabeth Rourke Investment Trust, P.O. Box 41. Oh. What? Oh, this one's this one's being continued. Oh. Just so that if anybody's here. Okay. Um, I've just been asked to take 30 seconds, gentlemen. Um, Final hearing the petition of Stephen and Karen May at 44 Cleverly Street has been continued to July 12th. 12th ish. That's the one that the newspaper. The newspaper didn't want it. Missing the one ad. I'm sorry, we so should have said it, that at the very beginning. Uh, open it. Uh, open it. Agree to continue. Uh, I guess. And July 12th. Yeah, and then yeah, close it. What Marshall said. that uh, uh, Do I have to read it officially? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Our yes. newspaper did not place her ad. She got it in, they charged her, and they did not place it. Okay. So it's official. All right. So on the petition of Stephen and Karen May, 44 Cleverly Street, Abington, for a six foot setback variance to construct within 35, set 35 foot setback. The 17529 at 44 Cleverly Street um, to be continued till July 12th, July 12th at 7 a.m. You're first on the docket, yeah. so you're in and out in no time um, to due yeah. to um, uh, legal publication, legal legal notification issues. Yeah. So it's a motion to continue. So um, I'm standing out of that because I'm the 
Okay. All right. So um, you don't have to go. We have a second for the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. All righty. Once again, um, so we did approve the petition of Mary Elizabeth Rourke Investment Trust, PO Box 41, Abington, for a variance under 17514 to allow access to proposed single family dwelling at 466 Plymouth Street, Lot 3, by constructing a driveway over a budding property within an access easement, property located on Assessor's Map 40, Lot 59, in the R30 zone. Good evening. My name is Jeff Goldman from SiteDeck Engineering. Uh, I'm representing the Roth family. Uh, uh, with me here tonight is Jim Roth. And um, similar to the previous application that was heard, we are seeking a variance from Section 175-14 of the uh, location and driveway access to a principal building. Um, however, unlike the, the, the previous application, we are proposing to construct a we are proposing to have two separate driveways to provide access to two separate dwellings. Um, we're not asking for a shared driveway at this location. Um, so the relief we're looking for is to be able to construct a driveway not through the legal frontage. Um, um, this is an idea we've been thinking about for some time since we started doing the development out at the site. Um, there is a, um, we were actually here back in October of uh, 2017 um, for the overall project site to get um, uh, the exception from the inclusion in the uh, floodplain and wetland protection district. And at that time, there was some discussion about, you know, the, the real lot, which I, you know, we weren't proposing any construction at that point. But how to get access to it. So I know, um, although formally we weren't here uh, for this application, there was a little bit of discussion at that meeting about it. So um, after looking at and evaluating uh, how to get access back there, um, what we decided to do is request a, a relief from the zoning bylaw. Um, and we feel we have several good reasons for um, requesting that relief. Um, first being, there is an issue with um, proximity um, in order to meet the standard and provide a driveway access to this lot here, lot three, we would have to come in from Plymouth Street in this location here, come in and make a 90 degree bend and then basically take, continue the driveway where we have it proposed right now. In order to do that, we'd have to construct a driveway in close proximity uh, to the driveway on the budding property, which as you can see is an extremely narrow lot your driveway is basically goes right up along the, uh, the property line in this location here. Um, the other reason we're kind of opposed to constructing a driveway in this location is across the street, you have St. Bridget's School and Church in that location. So this driveway would basically be coming in directly down the hill on that driveway. And it would be uh, roughly 160 feet from the intersection of Central and Street. street where we Access. Um, we feel that from a safety point of view, uh, a better way to access this particular lot would be from Central Street adjacent to the, uh, the driveway that's being under construction or will be constructed soon to provide access to the dwelling that's under construction on lot two. Um, by doing this, again, we provide more of a separation distance between the actual driveway access and the intersection. Um, it's my understanding, I mean, Adam Bonnell is going to traffic study in the area, but it's my understanding that the traffic on Central Street is substantially less than what people have on Plymouth Street. So we feel it's a better location uh, for the driveway. The, the last issue, and to me, is probably the, the, the biggest issue is that the part of the area uh, of the closed block, or the existing lot, I should say, that um, slopes down from north to south towards Central Street in this location here. By constructing a driveway that basically would cut through that slope, we'd either have to go one or two ways with that. We'd have to basically try to keep it at existing grade um, so it could let runoff pass over the driveway. And then the low point would be kind of where the, the 90 degree bend here, which during the winter could you know, create somewhat of an issue on the driveway with icing and, and such. Or the other option would be to raise that up slightly and to put a culvert 
under the driveway so that the stormwater that comes down from these properties is allowed to pass um, and work its way down into, there is a catch basin that's located in this location here on the site where all this runoff comes down to, gets collected and then gets piped out to, uh, into the top of the nation. Um, so we're, you know, in, in order to work in this area, there is a, a, a bit of a topography change that we would have to deal with to construct the driveway in that location. Whereas if we were to come directly in Central Street, it's basically one consistent grade going up gradient to access the, um, where the uh, dwelling would be situated on Lot 3. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Didn't we just pass a bylaw on um, driveways? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> driveways, uh, one and two family uses. Uh, no driveways or parking areas shall be closer than three feet from a side lot line. So if you approve this conforming driveway, I guess it is now, would be now. It would be non-conforming and you'd have to issue a variance because that's actually crossing the lot line goes from out from the existing lot, whatever it is there in the left rear, the northwest corner of that plan that's going on to the lot of the next uh, abutter. So that would create, would require zoning relief if you granted this. But, but making a conforming lot non-conforming is not Well, really you're not supposed to be doing that exactly. anyway in general is taking something that's conforming, making it non-conforming right. and then that's granting it relief. That's not the idea. Um, and additionally, um, they have taken out some language with regards to driveways in proximity to one another, which used to be pretty confusing in uh, uh, 175, 47, C and planning and zoning, etc. And they've put it with uh, one and two family uses. They have taken that out, so um, they will be able to access um, on Plymouth Street um, without any relief. And I don't think uh, Plymouth or. Uh, off center. Well, Plymouth come, is the coming business. down the long way, okay. the way they don't want to come yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and, and coming in to uh, in front of St. Mary's there, I guess it is, or whatever. Bridget. Bridget, yeah, excuse me. Um, yeah, so I, uh, based on this uh, new bylaw 17547B, one and two family uses, no driveways or parking areas shall be closer than three feet from a side so lot line. Uh, if you granted their request, you'd be making it non-conforming and then requiring a variance. We're, we're asking for a variance. Yeah, so no, it would be requiring a making it no more non-conforming. Yes, yeah, so another variance. And you need two variances, the one you're requesting and as well as another one uh, because you're more than closer than three feet to another lot line. Are you saying where, where the where the driveway would actually cross over the the lot line? We would need a variance for that as yeah. well. Yes. Because based on this, so they just changed the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When was that changed? April. Uh, and last month. May. Last month. May. The twenty first, I think. Twenty first of effective as a passage. It, it goes to be in called as. Uh, I was, Unless I was disappointed to hear this. As of so the end of that risk. meeting, um, it's in effect and, and it remains in effect until the AG says it's not in effect. Really? Um, which I was very disappointed in because I wanted them to say the old ones are in effect until uh, the Attorney General ratifies them. But. Mm -hmm. That's been something a couple years now. Yeah, to make it more confusing right. and more billable <laughs> hours for attorneys, they do it this way. <laughs> now, was that the, you say last month, you, and then you said April. Was it 21st of well, April? Well, it's our town May? meeting. It was our town meeting. In April. No, no. May 21st. May, 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 May,
I don't know. I could double check that with counsel. But it's still, you. well, we still have the law, is the law. It doesn't we, change. The he's uh, claiming that he maybe filed the building permit before or filed something before. Oh, if, if an application is filed before a zoning change, we can't be held to a new standard that wasn't in effect when we filed. Well, you still an would be because it's conforming going to non conforming, regardless. I, he, well, I don't. The bylaws at the I time of filing. I would have to. I think we need to talk to town council. Yeah. On this. I would have to defer to council with regards to that. Um, I don't know the answer. We don't want to make a decision tonight. And, and I know that it. that's true with what you're saying with building code, with zoning, and there is no application per se. There is to build the house, but there isn't to place the driveway. I mean, that goes for any application before any board. I mean, you can't be held to a standard not, that's I, not in place you're, when you file an application. If you're a counselor, well, I'm not going to stand here and debate it with you because I'm not trained in that, but I'm also not going to accept it uh, and advise this board to, until uh, I have confirmation from our counselor. That's what I would advise the board because well, I don't know the answer to that. Right. It, that's mm -hmm. a strong trade, but I think the actual deciding um, issue is when the board actually makes its decision. That would be, um, I think, um, I think you are because it's the law. If the law changes at the time, it's, um, I, I know there's constitutional issues, but I, I think you are still tied to whatever the law well, is. In all actuality, it's, it should be from when the lot is created. What, what zoning regulations are in effect when the lot is created? Mm -hmm. No. So no. I don't that know would, the answer. That we're pretty sure. Yes. That well, that, I mean, that would be, I've dealt with this on a number of oh, occasions. Really? Well, maybe it could be. I mean, I've yeah, that's, done it. I've it's, uh, it. it's, yeah. uh, it's for counsel. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Defend I, I, us in court would be, defend you in court would be the one um, to guide. He may well be right. And I feel sorry if he is and that we've held him up. But I wouldn't advise you to do that to uh, um, because he's here to advocate on behalf of his client, and that's what I'd be doing if I was him as well. And he may well be saying, uh, yeah, but I don't know that. Yeah. We don't know that. Am I wrong in hearing you, Marshall, um, that it seems like the applicant actually, if he's interested in coming in off the of Central Street, needs to ask for two variances? Assuming that. Assuming that is the, the route you is applicable. It, you're accessing a lot yes. where you do not have frontage, that's one, and you're more the closer in this new bylaw, uh, not uh, closer than three feet from okay. a side lot line. You're actually crossing the lot line. So that's what we're seeking. That would be the second relief that would be required, in my opinion. I mean, I've never been through this before. No. Never had one like this. But it, mu it must be a common issue where you file things and the laws change while you're doing it. He's saying you've been through it before? And you've been yes. through it before. Yeah, I, I mean, I have no problem if you want to look into it with town council, because certainly I don't think you're going to take my word for it. And, and I feel more comfortable if you, you get an opinion on it. But yeah. the yeah. fact of the matter is, if it, I'm not so concerned about that. It's it's what we actually requested in, in the in the application. Um, if we're not allowed to access um, off of Central Street to get to this lot, the, the second issue is a moot point. Um, right. You know, well, so there's no good. sense stringing this out if, you know, if we're not going to be allowed to access off of Central, because then that, you know, the three feet, and, and, you know, three feet wouldn't be a problem with other than crossing over the lot line with the proposed driveway that we have. Right. I simply pointed out that the abutting property, which Again, they wouldn't be held to the new standard because it's pre-existent, not performing. You know, they, their driveway is basically right on the property. Um, yeah. you, know, you know, by constructing, again, just by constructing another driveway in this area, you have the same line that goes down to the front basically, and you have a slope coming down from this front line down to that front basically. You've got to cross here and to construct a driveway in there. But again, you got to, you'd have to raise that driveway up put a culvert underneath it, and then the upgrading of butters are kind of at the mercy of the property owner to maintain that culvert in order to avoid any potential drainage problems from the water, stormwater coming down through the properties. If the culvert fails, if it gets clogged for whatever reason, you're looking at potential backup. 
Right. Um, I've also dealt with that in, in other circumstances, and that does become problematic, uh, especially on a, a situation like this one on a public road. He's talking about a private driveway. Right. Um, so th those are two driveways, right? It's two driveways. Two two separate driveways. Yep. And the other thing I'd like to point out too is that you know where these driveways. You know, one is the conforming driveway to lot two. The second driveway would be here. This is the applicant's property. This, the next house to the east of that is also the applicant's property. So the location of the driveways for the section of the driveway that we're actually seeking relief for, the only abutter that, that would agree would be the applicant. Um, we're actually moving it further away from any of the abutters here. Um, we can't. You know, I'm sure if you were to ask the abutters, and, um, I know there's a few here tonight, and they could probably speak to this better than I, but given the choice, they'd rather see this situation as opposed to having a driveway come in off of Plymouth here um, and potentially cut off their, you know, this drive is still on all the land across the back of their property and have a driveway in closer proximity uh, to their property. Okay. They can't do one driveway, huh? <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> so basically you want to know what we what our thoughts are on your initial application. Yeah, on section 175 14. Yeah. I mean, we Can could. We hear from the, um, do we have public? I was just going to yeah. say we could. We well, my, my question is should should we. Um, we could should we wait this. and. If your intention. Lawyer? If your intention is to entertain 175 14, then you're going to have. Uh, you're going to have to. Um, extend to the next <coughs> um, meeting. If you're going to deny, you just deny and it's a moot point. That's we, I think what you're saying. Correct. I mean there's no sense in waiting a month for a denial if if we don't get 175.14, 175.46, is that what it was? 47. 47. 47 it's, it's, it's pointless. 1BA. 1A. We could always condition the... Then if that's the case, then we should listen <coughs> to the abutters. Okay. We could condition the variance, or if we wanted to grant the variance, we could condition it on a uh, opinion from town if council whether or not he needs to come back. If you decide that way. Okay. But right. you're creating listen. a new hardship. We should I listen mean, to yeah. the abutters anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, let's listen to the floor. Yeah. I, I just want to say I'm glad to hear that you're considering the drainage issue. Um, no, not only is there a catch basin, and, and I pointed this out at the last meeting, but I don't know if any of you have ever gone over the area, um, and I know it's on, um, on those things, but uh, uh, the catch basin, I think you referred to, is up, is up around here. Yeah, it's right there. Right, that's it, right? Okay, that's what you mean. This concrete wall, it's not a concrete wall, it's a culvert. Okay, it's got two great big holes in it. Okay. <laughs> and there's only, there's only one reason I was in the Army Engineer Corps for a while, oh, and okay. I tell you what, there's only one reason you have a, a wall in the ground with two big <coughs> holes. It's a culvert, right? Okay. I think we all know that. So I, I've seen this, I mean, I have the water come through my yard and go right down. This is my, actually, this is my lot here, right? So the water comes right along, actually comes along to the little points. And goes right to the back of my yard and goes right down into this little lying area. And it goes, it just, you know, it goes into the ground. I don't know, but I think some of it goes in here, some of it goes in there, whatever. This is all a great place for the water to just sink in. And if I think if a driveway comes in through here, we are going to be flooded out. You know? So I'm, I'm all for putting the driveway out that way. Okay. okay. And well, also, you've got, you've got, I've got the cross, I've been here 19 years. See, Bridges comes out. And so I've had, Three people went over trees in my lawn. They come out of that parking lot. <laughs> oh, really? I had a woman step on the accelerator. She thought she was stepping on the brake. Oh. I've had Kinder's officer Cutter. He's been on my lawn twice. Yeah. Not recently, but they come right out. And it, I had a woman swerve to avoid somebody coming out of St. Bridges. She went up over the lawn. We drove right over my lawn, drove over my, over my saplings, and then she kept on going. She was like 75 years old. Please, like, just 
easy. So you live right across there. That that's your house. You cannot right have a driveway coming out here. I mean, you can, but it's going to be it's a safe. It's going to make a disaster. It is, and the drainage issue. So. Are you you Mr. Carter? Is that right? Yeah, Mr. Carter. Okay. I, I really, you know, we don't like my, we don't obviously aren't excited about the idea of the driveway way along here, really. Um, right, along your house. But I mean, it's bad enough. It's going to be back here. Okay. So. Thank you. Mr. Little Point. Joel Point. I live. 438 Plum Street. My parents live at 430 Plum Street. I've lived here all my life. Um, there is a major drainage issue coming through the yards, and if there was a driveway there, it would be a major, major issue. Um, as far as the driveway going out here, I have no problem. Um, it actually gives us a 20 foot buffer, otherwise, it would be right on the property line. I have an in ground swimming pool right there. I'd rather have it away than. You know, the car's driving right behind the pool and the kids are playing. As far as the traffic, same thing has happened to me. My, my house has actually got hit from a lady leaving Bingo at 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Driving yeah. straight across Route 58 with the traffic. Yeah. If, if you let them off, you know, those, another driveway that can be directly across from the house. And, you know, 5 o'clock, we can't even get in and out of our driveways as it is on Route 58. Okay. Yeah. I know we're all supportive of it, and my other neighbor that sits for us right in a row would rather have the driveway up back. So it would be a hardship for you guys, is that what we're trying Absolutely. to say? Absolutely. I mean, we would literally, this lot next to me, I've got pictures of ducks in the backyard, and then it gradually goes from my yard, my mother's yard, to Jeff's yard, way. to that culvert. And, you know, I don't know how you mitigate that, even putting a driveway with a culvert in because it's just going to hit the back of the other side of the car and go nowhere. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? Do I have to say anything? Anybody else? No? Okay. All right. Close them to the You're all set? Okay. Close them to the floor. Bring it back to the board. So obviously uh, Mary Rourke's on board with this, correct? She's going to be in smoke. Okay. Okay. I mean, this is one of the most ridiculous shaped lots I've yeah. seen yeah, in, just in, in, in the it town. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculously <laughs> conforming. <laughs> okay. Um, conforming is conforming. I get it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I would, if I was in Mr. Cotter's shoes, I would, given, I would not want my, my yard ringed with asphalt. You know, given looking at these grades where, you know, it's dropping, you know, almost four feet in, you know, whatever that traverse is, 40 feet or something like that, whatever that width is. Um, well, and that was kind of my point. I mean, we don't have a major topographic change out there, but when you look at the topography of it, there is a bit of a hardship to try to construct a driveway across that. So unlike the previous case, we had wetlands and... We're not talking anything that drastic, but in order to construct a driveway through that sliver and to grade it, you're going to have to raise it up, which listening to the abutters uh, is really going to be an issue. Just, just to add that the last time we were in front of the board, Mr. Carter expressed the fact that he didn't want the driveway running parallel to his lot. Yeah. So that's why we brought this in today. We, uh, some, of the, some of the neighbors also asked us if you'll notice that We've turned the houses, the two mm -hmm. lots, we've yep. turned them so they weren't directly looking at the house. So we did do that as well, uh, basically working with the neighbors and things like that. But Mr. Carter's the one that actually brought that idea to our plate, if you will, about the fact that he was opposed to the driveway coming down parallel to his property line. Okay. okay, so the access easement, that's going to be, where is that now? On lot two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be, uh, and it's solely on lot two. It would be in this location. Basically, you look at the driveway, you know, you go out maybe three, four, or five feet. It's, I uh, believe, 20 feet in width. Uh, what was done? 25 foot wide uh, access easement. So basically, 25 feet wide, and you come over. When you get beyond this property here, the driveway comes Cuts back down. onto lot three. 
plus is the profit margin. Now, what are you going to do about that now um, if it's ever sold? Um, is this house for you or is this, this is going to be sold, correct? It's to be determined yet. We, we probably will be selling it. So what are you going to do with that entrance property, that area? That'll be That's going to go with the house? Correct. That'll be with the deed. I just want to make sure because so... So that's your property now, correct? Correct. And that's going to go with the Coles home. Okay. Yeah, you couldn't break it up. Well, I just want to make sure that the house would suddenly become non-conforming. Exactly. So yeah. I just want to make sure that it's lot three will perpetually have an easement on lot two to cross, pass and repass. All right. So that's question I have here is the hardship part. I don't see one. Again, it's uh, it's a conforming lot. You would be making it non-conforming, which is frowned upon. So again, it, you don't. I'm sorry to interrupt. It the lot itself is conforming. We are not changing the lot. We're not looking. To well, change you would be by <laughs> going on that abutting property. Well, no, we're not. We're not changing anything conforming about the lot. The driveway. There's, there's no driveway in place now. So no, basically, but I mean, okay. Right. I mean, we're we're seeking a variance in order to right. You know, does some, do uh, be allowed to do something that doesn't comply with the zoning regulations. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but the fact we're not making the lot itself non-conforming. Um, it's already, like you said, it's ugly. But it's, it's ugly. It's, yeah. it's amazing um, that it's conforming. Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, that's not good, man. Um, no, but the lot itself is not going to change. It's right. just the access to the lot. That there's yeah. I, I would simply it. ask the board consider the alternative. Um, one way or another, you know, the house it's a good point. It's going to get built. It's a good um, point. Um, the neighbors most likely are the. Per the people are going to have the hardship more than um, the building itself up back. I understand that, and it's not one driveway, which is it was, which is a good thing. Um, Just saying. <laughs> bro, we're being filmed, you know. Okay. Um, any other questions, anybody? Ash. Okay. All right, gentlemen, let's make a decision on this. Now, we have to watch out because, again, the bylaws have changed. If, if, if we do vote for this, uh, we may have probably put a condition on that you may have to come back for another variance. Correct, Marshall? I believe so. If it's yeah. approved. If it's approved. You know, Anything else to be said? Uh, no. No? no. Anybody want to make a motion? I will double check with council uh, and try and verify uh, whether or not um, the applicant has to comply with the new bylaws based on the timing of his permit application, et cetera, in this situation. Okay. I know I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous on that part, but like you said, that if if the we put a condition on if they if it does pass, um, they will have to come in front of us again, correct? I believe so. Yep. So the condition is basically that if it's determined that um, uh, uh, additional the applicant wasn't grandfathered in. So so basically, in in my position, if it is determined that that is in fact the case. Um, we'd actually have to file a, a separate application for that mm -hmm. variance. We That's couldn't simply do it with this because it wasn't advertised as such. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. You haven't asked, haven't for that. asked for it. Right. So it, you know, it'd be a separate application anyways. All right. And, well, and really in essence, easy. right. And in essence, yeah. So we actually you're almost need the only condition. at risk if you're if it's challenged, as well, right? Well, I'm sure if if it, it, it'd be an issue come. Time the marshal would go away. Right. Can't, it, yeah. If we can't conform with something right. that may or may not be in effect, then we'll simply. We just want to make sure yeah. we cover our bases before right. we make any motion at all. So, no, yeah. But to that point, he wouldn't actually need the condition because if that bylaw is in effect, he's going to need to come Marshall's back. Marshall's going to say yeah. he's going to need to come back for another variance. Yeah, so I'm going to have to check. If you grant yeah. this and he chooses to use it, and she says yes, he has to comply with the new bylaw. And he'll have to come back if mm -hmm. he chooses not to use this no, uh, relief that that's granted yeah, to him now. Then he'd be able to use the other one. Yep. That would put us in a position though where we almost have to grant a second variance because right. otherwise it would be a useless first variance. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, if to, you potentially you're going to have to grant a variance because you granted a variance. Yeah. Right. Cross that driver when you get that to the <laughs> But you're doing that basically to protect. The neighbors. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, in, in the future, I mean, it, with that bylaw, any granting of a variance like this is going to require two at that point, because at some right. point, yes. you've got to bring the driveway onto the property. Exactly. And, and um, you know, you're right where we've dozens of times had people file something right before a known zoning bylaw would change so that they could take advantage of oftentimes more lenient definitions and regulations. Yeah, if, if, if people know, like if it's been advertised at, at town meeting, if the regulation is going to change and they know they're going to propose something that wouldn't meet the new standard, right. the idea being they get an application prior right. to the standard change. Yeah. So We've run into that dozens of times. Oh, yes. Again, that's yeah, what that we're talking about here. We just want to mm -hmm. make sure we get it correct. Uh, do we feel comfortable, gentlemen? I will make a motion to approve the petition of Mary Elizabeth Rourke Investment Trust, P.O. Box 41, Abington, for a variance under 17514 to allow access to proposed single family dwelling at 466 Plymouth Street, Lot 3, by constructing a driveway over an abutting property within an accident, access easement. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very Thank much. You. Sorry All for right. the driveway nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Come for, for me Thank you for coming. I don't get it. But I'm done. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, wait a minute. Before you do that, hold on a second. Oh, wait. Hold on one second. Yeah, sorry. No, 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 we're good. No. Uh, let's see. Before we do that, uh, take care. Uh, the purpose for uh, the system uh, was 66 uh, Pilgrim Street. Pilgrim Street, excuse me. I'm getting late. Oh, uh, pay fees prior to building. In there and a fire watch. What? Oh, the revised agenda? Oh, geez. That I had, I had written yeah. on. Did you go where I put it? You got it? The, uh, Hold on, Abington. Probably in my pile. He's throwing stuff on the floor. So. <laughs> what this? What this? Yeah. It's, it's Mrs. May. Yeah, here you go. Like that's it. That I had written on just for the back. Oh, okay, beautiful. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, where did John go? Oh. But then they he had so much fun. Oh, there he is. John, do you want to say anything before we uh, kick off the night? But anyway, thank oh, you. Still on. Oh, it's still on? Yeah, I don't care. I'm done. <laughs> Look, uh, no, I just think we've come a long way. we still got a way to go. I, I really fought to bring the training that I've got and the research that I've done from other towns. Uh, yeah, I just want to, I think being on a sign committee too, and water in my house still in the cellar. I think that just took its toll on me, and it's time to move on. And we got two weddings, one already gone by, so. But I'll still help Mr. Marshall. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Thank you John. All right. Wow. Thank Thank you. You. Hey, Marshall, question for you, sir. Um, we adjourned. We are. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, this is on in for, you know, whatever. Oh, do you want to yeah. adjourn that? Let's adjourn. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, turn that off. You got Thank it. you. We still own you um, turn it off. Oh. Uh, no, you showed jurisdiction me, uh, on electric okay. signs. Yeah, you showed me the sheet. Uh, it is back with you guys now. <laughs>